Good morning, Your Honor. The Spanish interpreter is on the line. No, Your Honor, I have not. I do, to the best of my ability, Flavio Rodriguez, the certified court interpreter. Good morning. Can you hear me in Osceola? Yes, Your Honor, we can hear you in Osceola. All right, uh, can, counsel, can you please announce your presence for the record? Yes, Your Honor, Tally Chrysler, Assistant Public Defender. I am for the state. And then Paul Kahn for the state. All right. Uh, Anna Luisa Abreu Guzman. Hello. All right, can you please state your name? Anna Abreu. All right. And Mr. Abreu, I do find that at this time there is sufficient probable cause with respect to the charge of possession of controlled substance without a prescription. Um, defense, do you wish to be heard with regards to uh, release? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Um, she does have gainful employment and she does have um, she has lived in Florida for five years. She, uh, um, she has a place to stay and affordable bond for her would be in an amount of $500. All right, and State? State would just ask for uh, certain conditions to be in place upon her release. Right. Which conditions are you requesting? Uh, just no, no drugs or alcohol upon release. All right. Or just no drugs. All right. Um, we're going to reduce the bond to $1,000. I'm going to include the condition that she not consume any um, any drugs without a prescript without a valid prescription. All right. And I will point. Judge, the defendant is out on. The yes. Defendant is out on county probation for Osceola County case 19 MM. Two four nine three. Are you taking any action on that? Um, wait, how do I start it? Like that? All right. So with regards to nineteen mm two four nine three, uh, counsel, uh, what's your response, defense counsel? Yes, Your Honor. We would ask that um, we would ask that you take no action on 19 mm 2493. Uh, she's relaying that um, she hasn't started probation yet, and that she has to reschedule her first appointment with them. All right, state. State has no position at this time. All right, and PTR, what was she on probation for? Judge, uh, she was sentenced on July 31st of this year for petty theft, six months county probation. I, I'm not going to take any action with regards to the uh, uh, probation case at this time. We'll let the probation officer uh, issue a, an affidavit if necessary. All right, next case is Pat Patricio Francisco Barbosa. And sir, state your name. Patricio Barbosa. All right. I do find that there is sufficient probable cause, uh, or that the, the previous court found that there was probable cause. He failed to appear um, for court. Bond was set at $1,000. Uh, anything additional from defense? Yes, Your Honor. He was actually in custody in Polk County when this happened. Um, 
he could not have have left the jail if he had want well, if he had wanted to to attend court. He had actually had a uh, he has advised me that he had a hold in regards to this case while he was in custody in Polk County. All right, and state any response? No response, Your Honor. All right, and what was bond originally set at? Do you know? Defense, do you know what bond was originally set at, or PTR? I do not know what his original bond on this case was. All I have is the failure to appear bond, which is a thousand. Judge right. pre-trial release doesn't have any information on this case since it's a failure to appear. All right, so the court will leave the bond that's previously set at a thousand dollars. If uh, you cannot meet that bond, then you can petition the court uh, and the judge who's handling the case. And um, the defendant does qualify for the public defender, and I will appoint them to represent him. Yes. Derek Beasley. All right, sir, state your name. Derek Beasley. All right. The court previously having found that there was a violation of probation, bond was set at no bond. And there are two other cases which there are violations of probation, or two cases which there are violations of probation for which uh, bond was set at no bond. Uh, bond will remain set at that amount. Um, you can ask the judge who's handling the case to consider setting a bond. All right, sir. I will appoint the public defender to represent you. And court dates will be set. All right, Luis Alberto Berdesia Cruz. Uh, he was admin PTR, Your Honor. All right. All right, uh, Miranda Brooks. She's approaching. All right. Ma'am, state your name. Miranda Brooks. All right, I do find that there is sufficient probable cause with respect to the charge of battery, domestic violence. Um, Defense, do you wish to be heard with respect to release? And before we do that, actually, let me get some input from PTR. Is she eligible for PTR? Judge, at this time, because of the nature of the charge, being a dangerous crime, she qualifies only for bonds with PTR. All right. And defense? Yes, Your Honor. PTR did say that they had been in contact with the alleged victim in this, and he does request contact. Ms. Uh, Brooks is um, a nursing mother. She has a child that was born in June of this year uh, that, is still, that is still nursing. She has five other children that she homeschools at this point. And um, given that the alleged victim in this does wish contact as, as provided by PTR, um, we would be asking for a no hostile contact and for her to be able to return home as she is an uh, integral part of this, this children's uh, home life and, um, and her um, her new child is in fact still uh, at rest. All right, state. Your Honor, the state would argue for uh, no return and no contact with the victim. Since he's not present today, we cannot elicit any testimony um, that he's requesting no hostile contact and return to the. All right. To the home. Uh, the court will set bond at $100 with PTR conditions as follows. No hostile contact with the victim or anyone else in the household. There is uh, not to be possessed, the, the, the uh, defendant is not to possess any weapons or firearms. And uh, she does qualify for the services of the public defender, so I will appoint the public defender to represent her. All right, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Your Honor. 
All right, and Miranda Darnell. Ma'am, please state your name. Miranda Darno. All right, and this is a violation of probation uh, defense. Do you wish to be heard with regards to this case uh, and the problem? Ms. Darnell. Go ahead. Ms. Darnell has, uh, has indicated that she's hired private counsel, Your Honor. All right, and ma'am, who have you hired? Catherine Medling. All right. All right, so um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave bond as previously set at no bond for the violation of probation. Uh, Ms. Medley can file a motion on your behalf with regards to uh, your release before the judge will be handling the violation of probation. All right, ma'am? All right, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Denorio David. All right. Can you please state your name? Denorio David. All right, Mr. David, this is an out of county warrant. Uh, I will appoint the public defender to represent you. Uh, however, the bond will remain at zero bond. You can request that the judge in Polk County Set a bond on your uh, set a bond in your case. All right. Thank you, sir. Walter Davis. He's in the hospital, Judge. All right. We'll have to reset that. <coughs> um, do we have any more information other than he's in the hospital? Is he is he set to be released, or do we, we don't know? PTR. Uh, PTR doesn't have any information on that, just that he's in the hospital, Judge. All right, so we don't know when he's uh, coming back. All right, so we'll set that for uh, his appearance 24 hours from his release. Thank you, Judge. You're welcome. All right. Paul Dimitro. So with respect to 19 CF 2817, uh, the court does find that there is probable cause with respect to that offense. Bond was set at $3,500. With respect to the violation of probation in 2019 CF 2277, uh, probable cause was found, bond was set at zero. And with respect to 19 CF 351, Probable cause was found on the BOP and bond was set at zero. Uh, the court will appoint the public defender to represent Mr. Dimitro. Is there one more? 18 CF 351. And bond was set at zero as well on that one. Bond will remain judge, as Judge, well. on um, case, I'm sorry, Judge. Go ahead. On case 19 CF 2817, there are conditions of no return and no contact with the victim. All right, as to that case, the court will remain the conditions as previously set, as well as the bond amount as previously set in all cases. Mr. Demetra, if you wish to have the court reconsider that, you can file a motion before the judge, the judge who's handling each of your cases. All right, thank you. Yes. Kushan Diaz. All right, and you are Mr. Diaz? Yes, sir. 
All right. Mr. Diaz, the court previously having found probable cause with respect to this case and having issued a warrant for your arrest for failure to appear and previously set the bond at zero dollars, um, the court finds that you do qualify for the services of the public defender and will appoint them to represent you. Defense, do you wish to be heard with regards to bond? Yes, Your Honor. Um, Mr. Uh, Diaz has lived in Florida for 12 years. His family is, a whole bunch of them are in Florida, over 10. He does have um, three children and his wife that he does work to support, and he does, um, at this time, have gainful employment. Where, um, where do they live? Asking that, uh, they live in St. Petersburg, Your Honor. All right, State, any response? State would defer to the court's discretion. All right, uh, the court will set bond at 50,000. No other conditions. Thank you, Your Honor. Welcome. Matthew Fernari. And are you Mr. Fernari? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Court having found that you violated your probation as to a driving with license suspended. Bond was set at $2,000. Bond will remain as previously set. I will appoint the public defender to represent you. And if you cannot meet that bond, you can petition the judge who's handling the case to consider reducing it. All right? Thank you. Joshua Hardin. Are you Mr. Hardin? Yes, Your Honor. All right, I'm gonna appoint the public defender to represent you. This is an out-of-county warrant from Glades County. Uh, you'll be taken over to Glades County, and at this time- the I just was moved here from Glades County, Your Honor. Judge, this is an honestly all county case. Oh. Yes, sir. I've already finished the Glades County case. The driver on suspended. It violated my probation up here. All right. All right, so with regards to release, uh, defense, you wish to be heard? One moment, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Um, Mr. Darnell, or Mr. Hardin, apologies. Um, he has medical issues, he has some issues with uh, nerve damage that he has not been able to, um, to see doctors for uh, as of this time because of his incarceration. We would be asking that bond be set in, uh, in this case in a reasonable amount so that he can seek, um, so that he can seek uh, doctor's visits and so that he can, he can uh, see to his medical needs. All right, in state? Nothing from the state. All right. I'll set bond at $500, no other conditions. Uh, well, he has to uh, possess a valid driver's license in order to drive. It's the only condition, all right? Thank you, Your Honor. Yes. All right, Tammy Harrell. <clears throat> You, Ms. Harrell? Yes, sir. All right. Ms. Harrell, I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you. Um, this is a failure to appear. Bond was set at $4,999. It will remain as previously set. If you can't, cannot afford that bond, you can ask your attorney to petition the judge handling the case to reduce that amount. 
All right. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Paul Hunt. All right. And, sir, are you Mr. Hunt? I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you in this case. Uh, PTR, does he qualify? Judge, the defendant uh, qualifies for uh, PTR, uh, whether direct or uh, with bonds. All right, and defense? Since he does qualify for direct PTR, that's what we would be requesting, Your Honor, um, with, uh, with regards to Mr. Hunt. All right, and state? Nothing from the state. All right, I'm going to release him on direct PTR. I'm just going to require that he uh, not have any hostile contact with anyone. All right, and that's the only condition. Okay. Thank you, sir. Delroy Ling. All right, and are you Mr. Ling? Yes, Your Honor. All right, I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you. Uh, this is a violation of probation. Um, bond was set at no bond. It will remain as previously set. Um, Mr. Lang, if you wish for the court to consider setting a bond, you can ask your attorney to file a motion before the judge handling the case. All right, thank you. Understood. Yeah. Tristan Lynch. And are you Mr. Lynch? All right. And an arrest warrant, having previously found probable cause, was signed by a judge in the circuit. I will appoint the public defender to represent you. Uh, defense, do you wish to be heard with regards to Bond? Yes, Your Honor. He has lived in Florida for 15 years and is currently enrolled and attending school. He does work several jobs as well in order to uh, pay for that. His family, he does have six family members living in Florida and um, will be residing in Davenport. All right, and PTR, is he eligible for PTR? Judge, because of the nature of the crime, he will qualify for bonds with PTR. Uh, we were unable to contact the victim on this case. All right, and defense, uh, does he res currently reside with the victim? No, Your Honor. All right. Um, the court will uh, state anything additional? The state would ask for uh, no contact and no return to uh, the location where this offense occurred. So the court will uh, set bond at $1,000 with PTR. Uh, the conditions of PTR will be as follows. No contact with the victim whatsoever. No return to the Grand Hotel Orlando at 2900, 2900 Parkway Boulevard. And you're not to possess any weapons. Or return to the residence where the victim lives. So I know you don't live with her, so there's no reason to go over there. And PTR will verify uh, your, your residence. All right, thank you, sir. Michelle Maylinder. And are you Miss Maylinder? I'm sorry, I can't. Yes, I am. All right, thank you. 
I will appoint the public defender to represent you. Defense, do you wish to be heard with regards to bond or release? Yes, Your Honor. She has lived in Florida for 39 years, and her family does still reside here in Florida, uh, in uh, Kissimmee. Um, she does currently she does currently work. And one moment. Uh, and that's it, Your Honor. Does she currently reside um, with the victim? Yes, Your Honor. All right, and PTR? Judge, uh, because of the nature of the crime, the defendant will qualify our bonds with PTR, and we were unable to contact the victim in this case. All right, and um, if the court were to require that she maintain a separate residence, uh, could she live with one of those family members that you uh, cited to? understood um, what, what what she had said. Uh, the alleged victim in this actually lives with her parents and um, only visits the residence where she lives. All right, I'm gonna set bond at a thousand. Oh wait, state anything additional? State would ask for no contact and no return. No return to the residence? Yes. All right, well this is the issue I'm gonna um, Set bond at $1,000 with PTR. PTR conditions will be as follows. They're to verify residence that the victim in the case does not reside there. If the victim resides at that residence, uh, Ms. Mailender will be required to maintain a separate residence. She's to have no contact with the victim. She's not to possess any weapons. And uh, those are all the conditions for PTR. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Um, Jean Melendez Trinidad. Uh, bonded, Your Honor. Okay. Kenneth Palmer. All right. And he's approaching, Your Honor. All right. And, sir, you're Kenneth Palmer? Yes, sir. Okay. The court, having reviewed the affidavit, finds that there is probable cause. Um, I will also appoint the public defender to represent you in this case. And defense, uh, with regards to release, do you wish to be heard? Yes, Your Honor. Um, he is a lifelong resident of Florida, and all of his family members reside here. Um, he is he has currently been gainfully employed with the same employer for two years, um, and we would be asking that bond be set in this case um, in a reasonable amount. All right, state, anything additional? State would just ask for no contact. All right, so the court will set the bond at 100,000. Uh, as a condition of bond, the court will require no contact with any witness in this case or the underlying, uh, well, no contact with any witness in this case. I'll leave it at that. Emmanuel Pope. And you are Mr. Pope? Yes, sir. All right, I will appoint the public defender to represent you. With regards to the theft by employee, the court does find that there is sufficient probable cause. The court will set bond or the court previously set bond at $1,000. Bond will remain set at $1,000 um, with the additional condition that he not return 
to the uh, scene where this occurred at his former employer, Dunkin' Donuts, at 5341 West US 192. Um, PTR, there's uh, other cases for which he was out on bond and ROR'd. Yes, Judge, the defendant is our ROR for two Osceola County cases, 19 CF 2125, 19 CF 2139. I also have, uh, is, or is that this case, 2019 2138. That is incorrect, Judge. That case uh, was uh, dismissed. Okay, thank you. All right, state? Nothing from the state at this time. All right, the court will revoke bond as to 2019 CF2125, as well as 2019 CF2139, as uh, this offense a violation of the terms of release. Yeah. Set at, set at no bond. Mr. Pope, if you wish for the court to set bond in those other cases, you can petition the judge who's handling them. Luis Ramos Santos. He will be, he'll re be requiring the use of a Spanish interpreter. All right, so we'll save that one for later. Or, or, okay. Madam Interpreter, are you ready? Yes, Your Honor. All right, let's have him come forward. All right, and are you Mr. Luis Ramos Santos? Señor, es usted el señor Luis Ramos Santos? Yes. All right, and sir, do you need the services of the interpreter? Señor, usted necesita los servicios del intérprete. I'm sorry. Do you need the services of the interpreter? Señor, usted necesita los servicios del intérprete. Sí. Yes. All right. Sir, uh, I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you. Señor, designaré al defensor público para que le represente. All right, defense, do you wish okay. to speak with regards to uh, setting bond in both of these cases? Yes, Your Honor. We would ask that bond. Oh, apologies, Madam Interpreter. Se pregunta la defensa si desea pronunciarse con respecto a la fianza en estos dos casos. Yes, Your Honor. We would be asking that a reasonable bond be set in these. Um... All right, PTR. Judge, because of the nature of the charges, the defendant will qualify for bonds with PTR. We had contact with the victim. It is the same victim uh, in previous cases. The victim is requesting contact. Uh, the defendant has uh, prior domestic charges uh, and an extensive uh, criminal history. Sí, su señoría, pedimos que se fije fianza en ambos casos. ¿Qué dice la libertad provisional? Teniendo en cuenta la naturaleza de las acusaciones, el acusado reúne los requisitos para ser puesto en libertad, confianza y a través del programa de la libertad provisional. Hemos contactado a la víctima, quien es la misma víctima de casos anteriores, y ha solicitado que se mantenga el contacto. El acusado tiene además otras acusaciones por violencia doméstica y un largo historial penal. All right, State. State would ask for a no contact no return and no possession of firearms or uh, any weapons. ¿Qué dice la Fiscalía? La Fiscalía solicita que se prohíbe el contacto, que se prohíbe el regreso al lugar de los hechos y que se le prohíba la tenencia de armas y de armas de fuego en general. Escalation and violence from in these two cases. It's clear to the court that although the victim wishes to have contact, um, I'm not confident that the that would be in the best interest of the victim. Um, so for the uh, battery uh, in 19 mm 2881, the court will set bond 
at $2,500 with the following conditions, that he have no contact with the victim whatsoever, that he not return to the residence, that he maintain separate residences with the opportunity to return once uh, accompanied by law enforcement to retrieve any personal items and that he not possess any weapons. Teniendo en cuenta que la violencia en esta ocasión ha ido en aumento y sabiendo que la víctima desea tener contacto, aún así, no me siento cómodo y considero que esto no sea lo más conveniente para la víctima. Por lo que en el caso de agresión física 19MM2881 se fijará fianza en cantidad de 2.500 dólares y se imponen las siguientes condiciones. Se prohíbe todo tipo de contacto con la víctima, se le prohíbe regresar al hogar, Tendrán que vivir en casas separadas y como excepción se le permitirá regresar una única vez a, a recuperar sus pertenencias y también se le prohíbe la tenencia de armas. With respect to the other case, the court will set bonds with PTR. Um, as to count one, bond will be set at $7,500. With respect to count two, uh, bond will be set at, and the count one being the ag assault, aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Uh, count two being domestic battery, a court will set a bond at $500. And with respect to count three, hinder, delay, or prevent communication with law enforcement, bond will be set at $1,000. The conditions of the PTR will be no contact with the victim whatsoever, no return to the residence, except for the one time with law enforcement. He is to maintain separate residences and not possess any weapons. Uh, PTR will verify the residency. Con respecto al segundo caso, se impondrá fianza y también se impondrán las condiciones de la libertad provisional. En el primer cargo, que es el cargo de intimidación calificada con arma mortífera, se fijará la fianza en cantidad de 7.500 dólares. En el segundo cargo, que es el cargo de agresión física por violencia doméstica, serán 500 dólares. El tercer cargo, que es impedir la comunicación con los agentes de las autoridades, se fijará la fianza en cantidad de 1.000 dólares. Además, a través de la libertad provisional, se imponen las siguientes condiciones. Prohibición de contacto con la víctima, se prohíbe todo tipo de contacto. Prohibición de regreso a la vivienda, excepto por la única vez que él se le permitirá regresar acompañado de las autoridades. Tendrán que vivir en casas separadas y se le prohíbe la tenencia de armas. Además, la libertad provisional hará una revisión y estudio del hogar. Muchas gracias, señor. Diego uh, Lana, uh, uh, Diego Roa, sorry. He will also require the use of a Spanish interpreter, Your Honor. All right. Sir, can you please state your name? Señor, por favor, diga su nombre. Diego Roa Aldana. Diego Roa Aldana. All right. I will appoint the public defender to represent you. Designaré al defensor público para que les represente. All right, the bond was previously set at a thousand dollars. Defense service should be heard with regards to release. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, PTR has informed me that he is eligible for direct PTR, and that we would be asking for that in this case. And PTR. Judge, the defendant has no priors. He does qualify for direct pretrial release. All right, and state. The state would just ask for uh, the defendant not be allowed to operate any type of motor vehicle and to possess or consume alcohol. All right. Um. Anteriormente se había fijado fianza en cantidad de mil dólares. ¿Qué dice la defensa con respecto a las condiciones bajo las cuales él será puesto en libertad? La abogada de la defensa ha dicho, la libertad provisional me ha indicado que reúne los requisitos para ser puesto en libertad directamente a través de la libertad provisional. ¿Qué dice la libertad provisional? Él no tiene antecedentes, por tanto sí califica para ser puesto en libertad directamente a través de nuestro programa. ¿Qué dice la fiscalía? La fiscalía solicita que no se le permita él conducir ningún vehículo motor y que se le prohíba el consumo de alcohol. I will release. Mr. Roa Aldana on PTR. Um, he's not to consume any alcohol, nor is he to drive without possessing a valid driver's license. 
El señor Roaldana será puesto en libertad a través de la libertad provisional. Se le prohíbe a él el consumo de alcohol y se le prohíbe conducir si no tiene licencia válida. All right, thank you, sir. Gracias, señor. Joel Rodríguez. And you're Mr. Rodriguez? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Mr. Rodriguez, I do find that there is sufficient probable cause with respect to the charges of driving while license suspended as a habitual traffic offender, failure to obey law enforcement order to stop, and reckless driving. Um, defense, do you wish to be heard with respect to count two and release? Yes, Your Honor, we would. Um, Mr. Rodriguez has lived in Florida for 15 years. He has over 10 mem members of his family living here. Um, he currently has a eight-year-old daughter who has significant medical concerns that require the attention of both him and his wife. Um, she is wheelchair bound. Um, he has gainful employment and has worked there for at steadily for six years and is a member of, um, a member of a church within the community for three years. All right, and PTR? Judge, the defendant doesn't qualify for pretrial release. He's out on uh, state probation for cases for Osceola County and Polk County. Uh, you should have paperwork for an on-view VOP on those uh, charges. All right. And I do have that. Um, so what I'm going to do is, with respect to this case, I'm going to leave bond as previously set. Uh, as to count one, 2,500, and as to count three, 500, but I will set bond on count two at $1,000 with the condition that he not drive without a valid driver's license. With respect to his on-view VOP, the court will leave bond set at zero. Yeah, we only have, I only have the one from the 17 CF 700. And that is a... Gracias, uh, it seems that the officer only did uh, a violation for the Osceola case, Judge. Uh, you could take action on the Polk or we'll notify Polk. Uh, I'm not gonna take any action on the Polk. I don't have any information in front of me, so I'll, I'll let Polk take action if they yes, judge. believe it appropriate. All right. Yeah. All right. Luis Sierra Castillo. Good morning, Your Honor. Luis Sierra Castillo. Right. And sir, do you need an interpreter? No. Okay. All right. I will appoint the public defender to represent you. Uh, you're here on a failure to appear. Bond was previously set at $2,000. Bond will remain as previously set. If you cannot afford that bond, you can ask your attorney to petition the judge handling the case to set a lower bond. All right, sir? I have to sign it. Okay. We our, our records reflect that he did sign one, but either way, I will provisionally appoint one. Mr. Sierra Castillo, can you fill out an application and sign it? Are you willing to do that? Um, well, um, since it's, uh, it's just a traffic ticket, uh, I, I would prefer to defend myself. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm not going to appoint the public defender. Bond will remain as previously set. Okay. Brian Taylor. Yeah. All right, are you Mr. Taylor? 
This is, a, this is an act, an act one. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Mr. Taylor, I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you. Um, currently, you have an out of county warrant from Marion County, so the court will leave the bond as previously set, which was no bond. If you would like the court to set a bond, you can petition the judge in Marion County who's handling your case. All right, thank you, sir. I did. Brandon Tyson. All right, are you Mr. Tyson? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Mr. Tyson, I will appoint the public defender to represent you. No, I apologize. Um, you're requesting your own counsel, is that correct? You've uh, I was at one time, Your Honor, not, not anymore. I would like a public defender. All right. So I'm going to provisionally appoint a public defender. I'm going to ask you to fill out an application um, with respect to release. Um, this is a violation of probation. Previously, the court found that there was probable cause. Set bond at zero. Bond will remain at zero. Um, you can speak with your public defender uh, once you complete that application uh, about filing a motion on your behalf if you wish for the judge handling your BOP to consider setting a bond. All right? Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Bradley Williams. All right, and you, Mr. Williams? Yeah, she wants counsel. Oh, yes, yes, sir. All right. I will appoint the public defender to represent you. I do find that there is probable cause for battery, dating violence. Um, defense, do you wish to be heard with regards to release? Yes, Your Honor. Um, the uh, PTR was able to contact the victim, and she does wish contact. He has lived in Florida for two years and um, has had gainful employment for five months as a con constructor. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yes, that's. And we would be asking for a reasonable bond to be set in this. All right, PTR. Uh, uh, the defendant, due to the nature of the charges, qualifies for bonds with PTR. We were able to contact the victim. The victim is requesting contact. However, the defendant does have prior domestic battery charges, but the victim is not uh, the same. All right. Anything from the state? The state would ask for a uh no contact and no return to the president. All right, at this time, the court will set a bond at $1,000 with PTR. The conditions will be as follow. Uh, he was not to have any hostile contact with the victim in this case. He's not to possess any weapons. <laughs> All right, there'll be no additional conditions. Right, thank you, sir. Paul Young. Are you Mr. Young? Yes. All right. Mr. Young, you have a case stemming out of uh, a warrant from Orange County. Um, you're going to be transported over to Orange County to have that case heard. Um, so at this time, bond will re remain at zero bond. And I will appoint the public defender to represent you. Thank you. Ms. Ver Vernica. Rolden. And she will require the services of the Spanish interpreter, Your Honor. All right, thank you.
Ma'am, can you please state your name? Señora, por favor, diga su nombre. Veronica Roldan. Veronica Roldan. Hi, Ms. Roldan, you do have a warrant stemming out of charges from Miami-Dade County. The court will transport you to Miami-Dade County uh, for you to see the judge over there. Bond was set at zero and remain at zero. You can request that the judge in Miami-Dade County um, set bond. She didn't complete the affidavit, so it's not going to report. All right, thank you, ma'am. Señora, existe una orden en su contra por cargos que se originaron en el condado de Miami. Se le transportará a ese condado para que se presente usted ante el juez. En este momento se ha fijado en prisión preventiva y así quedará fijado como prisión preventiva. Una vez ante el juez, usted puede solicitar que se le fije fianza. Gracias. Thank you. Aviance Alexander. Are you Miss Alexander? Yes, sir. All right, does the public defender previously appointed on this? It seems like it was a reset. All right. Was was Miss Alexander already appointed a public defender? This looks like it was a 24 hour reset. Yes, Judge. Uh, the prior uh, IA order says uh, that the uh, public defender was appointed. All right. All right, so with regards to release, uh, defense, you wish to be heard? Yes, Your Honor, this was a, um, this was a reset for, a, uh, for the state attorney to provide um, a supplemental affidavit, and I don't seem to have one, uh, is what this was. I just have the original uh, arrest affidavit. All right. State. Your Honor, at this time the state has no other information uh, in regards to this case. All right, do you wish to make any arguments with respect to probable cause <coughs> defense? Yes, Your Honor. Um, so in this case, the they have an entire affidavit that explains a um, that explains the the rush into the house uh, post uh, as a hot pursuit, um, but we just have a we just have a conclusion that there were these things in the house. There's no explanation as to where in the house they were. If that if Miss Alexander had any control over these items, or if they were in her possession. Um, that is all that they, they say there. So we'd be arguing that there is no probable cause that these were actually her possessions within her possession or control. All right, and state? The state has no position at this time. The affidavit that's provided doesn't reflect where any of these substances were found. Without that information, the court can't find prob probable cause with respect to the charges. So at this, at this point, the court finds no PC. Miss um, Alexander, uh, you're released. On all counts. All right, Willie David. You, Mr. David? Yes, sir. All right. Judge, if I may, um, Mr. Davis family actually contacted me. Oh, this is the Osceola IA, aren't they? Yes. Um, I've had your opportunity to prepare for an IA in this. Um, you did contact our office this morning. Um, I'm happy to see you continue with the IA. I think they want to talk to you tomorrow, if possible. I believe that's the plan, but I am excited to see you next. All right, and your name? Counsel? Attorney John Scatorchio. John Scatorchio. All right. Uh, Mr. David uh, appears that Mr. John 
Scatorchio. Scatorchio, uh from the Public Defender's Office is present. I'm not the private oh, counsel. I'm sorry. That's okay. is, is private counsel here. I was contacted by your family with respect to these charges. Um, he is present, uh, but he's going to let the public defender uh, go forward. So that, just that you know that uh, he is present and observing the proceeding. All right. Okay, okay. All right. So uh, defense with respect to probable cause. Yes, Your Honor. In respect to the first case, again, it's like they. Mr. Uh, Mr. David says that he does not even live in the house, and they again have just said that they were found within the house, um, and as that they were in the house and he does not live in the house, the the application of these to him, uh, there's no reason to presume that the, he was in control of these. All right. So with regards to counts two, oh, I'm sorry, and. Are you, are you talking about defense? Are you talking about with regards to counts two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine? Yes, Your Honor. Um, I have I have no argument against probable cause for the resisting without violence. All right. And state? One moment, Your Honor. All right, so based on the affidavits uh, submitted, um, the court does have sufficient probable cause with respect to count one. Bond will remain set at $500. With respect to counts two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine, the court cannot find probable cause and he'll be released as to those counts. All right, PTR, um, was he on release on another case in 19? I think yes, Judge. Uh, Judge Morgan, uh, Judge Morgan found, uh, uh, did a revocation of zero bond on case 19 CF 162. All right, so with regards to that case, um, bond will remain as previously set by Judge Morgan at zero. Um, Council, you can file a motion before John, Judge John Morgan uh, to see if he'd consider setting a bond, uh, but you can contact your counsel with regards to that, all right? All right, look All right, Kathleen Garcia Rodriguez. And are you Ms. Garcia Rodriguez? Yes, sir. All right. The court previously having found probable cause, now finding that you failed to appear, court set bond at zero. Defense, do you wish to be heard with regards to bond? One moment, Your Honor. Your Honor, um, she missed court because she got her dates mixed up. She does have um, her children and her ex-husband that do live within uh, within the state of Florida in Tampa. We would be asking that a uh, bond be set in this matter, um, as she has also lived within Florida for uh, for 15 years. All right. And state state would ask for no return to uh, the location where the theft occurred. And 
Pete, do you have any additional information? This, this looks like a drug court. Hmm? Judge, uh, since it's a failure to appear, PTR doesn't have any information on this case. All right. So I'm going to set bond at $3,500 with the following conditions that she not return to the scene where this occurred, that she not consume or possess any um, drugs without a prescription. And I will appoint the public defender to represent her. All right, uh, Gary Nolasco. All right, and are you Mr. Nolasco? Yes, Your Honor. All right. And uh, I will appoint the public defender to represent you. Um, Defense, you wish to be heard with regards to release? Yes, Your Honor. Your Honor, Mr. Nolasco has, he basically just mixed up his Fridays when he was supposed to appear. Um, it was for, for mental health court, and we'd be asking that bond be set in here. Um, he's lived in Florida for nine years, and and um, and he does have uh, his children, his um, his sister, his um, his uh, child's mother, and everyone that that does live here in Florida as well. So he does have family and and family ties to the area. All right. Anything from the state? Uh, the state would just ask for no, uh, no drugs in this case. All right. All right, um, Mr. Nolasco, I'm going to set bond at two thousand dollars. The condition of the bond will be that you not consume or possess any drugs without a prescription. And that'll be the only condition. All right. Thank you, Your Honor. Randy Ramkumar. He's in the hosp hospital, Your Honor. All right, so we'll reset that for 24 hours from his release from the hospital. Mike Ramos. Also the hospital, Your Honor. Reset 24 hours from medical release. Darius Robinson. All right, are you Mr. Robinson? Yes, sir. All right, I will appoint the public defender to represent you. Or actually, I think they were previously appointed defense with regards to uh, probable cause. Yes, Your Honor, one, one moment.
PTR while we're uh, waiting on a response um, on Michelle Maylander. Uh, do you recall what the court set the bond at? $1,000, Your Honor. Okay, 1000 Plus pre-trial release, correct. All right, in response, defense? Yes, Your Honor. Um, in regards to this case, he, he, as the affidavit says, that he had just gone into the house, um, and there's no allegations that this is his house, is that he lives here, um, just that he was present at the house, and again, with no, uh, with no arguments as to, or no uh, affidavit as to where any of these things were found, um, we would say that it was not within his possession or control uh, at, the, at the same time. State. I see at the second to last paragraph, it said that it is noted that all three live at the above residence. So the state would argue that there is um, probable cause in this case due to the defendant living at the location. All right. At this point, again, based on the affidavit submitted, uh, the court cannot pinpoint where the drugs were recovered from. It's not clear which bedrooms. Um, other than the, the paraphernalia charge, which found it in a common area in the kitchen, but it still doesn't really uh, put Mr. Robinson, or yeah, Mr. Robinson, um, near the kitchen at the time that the uh, incident took place. So at this point, the court will find that there is not sufficient probable cause with respect to counts one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. The court will ROR him as to all those counts. All right. Uh, Sadie Wells. Also the hospital, Your Honor. All right, reset that for 24 hours uh, from medical release. And that's all we have, Your Honor. All right, thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. You're welcome. So the first case is Luis Torres Roman, and this is an interpreter case. Do you need this for here? Or? Do you need any of this? All right, sir, could you state your name? Luis Torres Roman. Luis Torres Roman. All right. And then we'll appoint the public defender to represent you in this case. All right. And defense with regards to probable cause, you wish to be heard? No, Your Honor. All right. Uh, court having found probable cause with respect to counts one, two, three, and four. Uh, we'll now consider uh, setting a bond as to counts one, three, and four. 
Council, do you wish to be heard with respect to release? Not at this time. All right, state, anything additional? Nothing from the state. All right, as to count one, the court will set bond at $5,000. With respect to count two, court will leave bond as set, no bond. And the court makes no finding with regards to proof, evident presumption of guilt, great. With regards to count three, court will set bond at 100. As to count four, bond is set at 100. Your Honor, can you re repeat those? Sure. With respect to count one, 5,000. With respect to count two, no bond and no findings on proof evident. With respect to count three, 100. With respect to count four, 100. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Thank you, sir. Madam Interpreter, that was the only interpreter case. Thank you, Your Honor. Have a good afternoon. All right, you as well. All right, Avi Bahabi. Good morning, morning. Counsel, can you please state your name? Attorney, um, excuse me, Attorney John Scatorchio. All right, and Sir, you are Avi Bahabi? Yes, sir. All right. Counsel, do you wish to be heard with regards to probable cause? Um, I do first, Judge, and then we can perhaps address Bond after. Um, I had a moment to review the narrative and the complaint from the officer, and the buildup to this was ultimately to a felony battery. Um, the substantial evidence that I saw in the narrative itself was two slaps that were recorded but shown to the officer given the state of the circumstances. Uh, Mr. Bobby actually called the officer in to aid in the situation. Um, the victim, unfortunately, was uh, Baker acted and is currently, to my understanding, unavailable for comment or um, any input onto this. However, uh, this isn't the first instance. Um, regarding the, the felony battery, <clears throat> um, based on what the officer has written up, I don't see anything that gives rise to all those issues of injury that these two slaps that were recorded and shown gave anything inquisitive, including the testimony from the um, officer and that, or excuse me, the doctor, that the injury on the orbital eye bone was the result of that. Um, it's a significant injury that um, wouldn't have stemmed from these alleged two slaps here. So I think we don't have enough here to establish the felony battery to that level. Um, it could meet. The, the first element um, that a strike did occur, but it doesn't meet the causes great bodily harm, disfigurement, disproportion, all that. <clears throat> all right, and state response. The state would argue that there is probable cause just based on the the injuries that were uh, that were seen on the on the victim on this night. At this point, I do find there is sufficient probable cause for felony battery. Um, the uh, substantial swelling um, would establish at least the possibility of a permanent injury or great bodily harm. Um, counsel, do you wish to be heard with regards to bond? Uh, I do, Judge. Um, Mr. Wahabi, uh, the, the, res the residence that occurred at, it was his home. Uh, this predated the incident. He was the sole occupant of that home a year up to him and the uh, alleged victim getting together. Um, he still currently uh, plans on residing there. Um, we would be asking that, because I'm understanding there's a no, there's, there's a no bond here. Um, we've been asking for a reasonable bond, maybe the amount of $1,500. He has no criminal history or any history of domestic violence or any other violent acts, uh, much less even a parking ticket is my understanding. Um, he owns and operates a business here in Central Florida. He's a graphic designer. Um, he doesn't have a passport. And to my understanding, this is the first recorded instance of alleged violence between the two parties. Um, he was actually picked up at the hospital with her when she was getting treatment. Um, the facts of which the trial court judge would probably end up addressing. But 
Uh, regarding the bond, um, I'd want to see him potentially released on the bond about $1,500. I think is reasonable uh, to make sure he's present for everything. Um, and I'm happy to address any other concerns the court might have in regards to um, contact and things of that nature. All right, so were they, were they cohabitating at the time of this incident? They were, Judge. Um, as I mentioned earlier, unfortunately, the alleged victim has had some uh, medical issues that need addressing. And in these circumstances, her family retrieves her from South Carolina and she tends to go reside with them. So she's currently in medical care right now, um, inpatient care. Um, in terms of her release, I am uncertain. I have not had any contact with that side yet. <clears throat> All right, and state. With regards to bond, the state would defer to the court's discretion, uh, and would just ask for certain conditions be imposed if he was to uh, be released. Which conditions? which would be uh, no contact and no return to the residents. All right. Um, so at this point, um, if I may be heard, Judge, before you sure. rule. Thank you. Um, the, the situation, it's a delicate situation. I just got called in yesterday on this. Um, it's his primary residence, and yes, they've been cohabitating together. Um, his other op viable options um, are going to be, I, I think, rather strenuous in terms of the living arrangement. I don't anticipate they're going to cohabitate again. He's assured me they're not, and she's going to be retrieved to go to South Carolina. Um, I don't know how the court would want to monitor lining up him remaining at the residence in the meantime, but he's assured me that they don't have plans to reside together there. So um, I'd leave it in the court's discretion, obviously, to make a ruling on this. However, he's limited in his resources where he can go otherwise. Um, there is one option for him to go down to Miami to live with at a house, but. Um, I think the purposes of getting this case closed moving forward, it's better to keep them within Orange County. So um, I would ask either a reasonable time for him to return to the residence or reside there until she is released um, or put in a no hostile contact order based on the history there not being any, there's no criminal history, and the medical proper testimony I provided today, that a no hostile contact would be sufficient in the meantime. He does qualify for a PTR. Right. So the court will release him on PTR with the following conditions. He's not to have any contact with the victim whatsoever. I'm gonna require that he maintains separate residences. So, so long as the victim is not residing at the home, he may reside there. However, if the victim is, is returning, he's going to have to make arrangements. And PTR will verify residency. Okay, would the court like me to put onto the record the other address potentially that he could reside at or just address that with PTR? Um, you can address that with PTR. Okay. And then the uh, bond amount. Yes, uh, he's also not to possess any weapons. Yeah. And those are all the conditions. All right. Thank you. Okay. That's all I have, Judge. Have a good morning. Thank you. All right, you as well. well we're in the afternoon now, aren't we? <laughs> all right, Paul Lindo. Time. Hold on. I understand if you can't have a present time so she can actually attempt to be here, do it. Like, this is the time you know she ain't gonna make it. It don't make no sense. Yeah, she's not gonna be here at this time she's at work. So you can call her and what's, go through what's, this. What's the name? Here. Tell, tell the judge your name first. Paul Lindo. All right, thank you. Mr. Lindo, you don't want the court to appoint a public defender to represent you? Oh, thank you. All right, so you do want the court to appoint a public defender to represent you? Sure. I'm sorry? Yes. All right. Uh, the court will appoint the public defender to represent you. Um, the court does find that there is sufficient probable cause with respect to the offense of uh, domestic violence battery. Um, defense, you wish to be heard with regards to release? One moment, Your Honor. All right. Your Honor, I see that he doesn't um, 
qualify for PTR at this point based on uh, lack of history that I'm seeing. I, I would ask for release on his own, own recognizance. Uh, Mr. Lindo has reported to me that he can't afford a monetary bond. What's a monetary bond? Money. Right. PTR? Doesn't qualify. Exactly. <laughs> and state? <Duh. laughs> My rights were never linked to me. This state has no be going position on. other than certain conditions <laughs> okay. be met. And again, having reviewed the financial Listen. affidavit, uh, the court will set bond at $500 with the following conditions. He's not to have any contact with the victim. Mm -hmm. He's not to return to the residence other than one time with the uh, <laughs> accompaniment of law enforcement to retrieve any personal property. You're not to possess any weapons. Sir. Um, uh, yes, sir? I was never read my rights. All right. Well. Uh, we're here for first appearance. Um, this isn't uh, the time of your arrest. We're not addressing anything other than what the officer stated in his report. All right, so the court will yes, sir. impose those conditions. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna ask you not to interrupt me. If you have any questions, you can ask your attorney. That's why, that's why I pointed her to you. Uh, the court will <laughs> impose no weapons as well. And those are all the conditions set forth. No return to the residence except for one time with law enforcement. All right. <laughs> all right, all right, we're all set then. Come on, there you go. All right, uh, Tyree Dante Lattimore? Yes, sir. All right. Mr. Lattimore, I do find that you qualify for the services of the public defender. I will appoint them to represent you. With respect to resisting an officer without violence, the court does find that there's probable cause with respect to both counts. And uh, counsel, do you wish to be heard with regards to release? At this point, Your Honor, um, I would just ask for minimum bond set on the first count and ROR set on the second count. I understand there's probable cause, um, but the state wouldn't be able to sustain an actual conviction on two counts, despite the fact that there's two officers. Uh, having reviewed the financial affidavit, the court will set bond on count one at $250. Bond on count two will be set at $50. No, no other conditions. As to, the, as to the other case, which is currently on ROR, the court will revoke ROR on that case. Um, Mr. Lattimore, you can ask your attorney to file a motion to see if the court will consider setting a bond in, those, in that other case, all right? Yes, sir. All right, thank you. Yes, sir. David Mann. All right, so we'll reset that then. All right, Donald Holt. Yes, sir. All right. All right, and Mr. Holt, I do find that you qualify for the services of the public defender. I will appoint them to represent you. And uh, based on the affidavit submitted, I do find that there is 
sufficient probable cause, uh, the court having previously found uh, probable cause in the uh, original arrest warrant. Counsel, do you wish to be heard with respect to release? One moment. Okay. All right, the court will set bond to 2,500. 2,500. Um, conditions are that you now return to the scene where this uh, offense is said to have occurred. And um, that's the only condition. Based on what, sir? Based the bond on what? Based upon the affidavit that I received, I'm reducing the bond to 2,500. I'm also going to require that you not return to the scene where this offense is I don't even know where this happened at. All right. Well, your attorney will explain to you where this offense occurred. You're not going to be allowed to return to that area. All right? I don't know about his charge. Bobby Turk, yes. Jr. All right. Yes, sir. All right. Mr. Turk, I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you. I find that you do qualify for their services. I do find that there is sufficient probable cause with respect to the offenses of possession of fentanyl, um, counts one and two, as well as count three, possession of drug paraphernalia, and count four, trespass after warning. Warning, counsel, do you have uh, any argument with respect to uh, bond? Your Honor, Mr. Turk has informed me um, that his wife will be trying to bond him out and has $200. Um, as such, I'd just be asking for a $1,000 bond as a primary on count one, um, 100 on count two, and ROR for the two misdemeanor offenses. All right, state. The state would uh, defer to the court's discretion on bond, however, would ask certain conditions be imposed. All right, so the bond is still under $2,000 which if she's got 200, uh, she should be able to bond them out. Yeah. Um, the, I, I, the issue, Your Honor, or the reason for my argument is that if the bonds stay how they are, assuming she goes through a bondsman, it's gonna total 400 because the 100s add up together. So if they stay how they are, it's gonna be $400 for a typical bondsman to to work with his wife. If we are war the misdemeanors, then that would create an affordable amount for him. All right, PTR, do you have any information with regards to that? Yes, he has a separate bond for each child. So the minimum he needs, or he needs four bonds. So he's rich. The bond right. will stay the same. So I'll ROR him. Bonds on counts one and two will remain the same. Bonds on count three and four, it'll be ROR'd. Thank you. And the conditions as to the bonds will be that he not consume or possess any alcohol, any alcohol or illicit drugs without a valid prescription. Okay. Kenom Alien, am I saying that right? Alien. Alien. All right. All right, Mr. Alien. Find that there that you do qualify for the services of the public defender. 
I will appoint yes, them to represent you with respect to the offense of robbery with a weapon. The court does find that there is sufficient probable cause. With respect to resisting an officer, I do find that there is sufficient, sufficient probable cause with respect to that. Um, counsel, do you wish to be heard with respect to release? I do, Your Honor, and I do have a probable cause challenge as to count one. Um, the robbery with a weapon, based on the short affidavit, I don't see any facts that are actually tying this individual um, to the robbery. So we had um, what were described as two black men um, witnessed by two victims, but when the when the victims were spoken to, it appears from the affidavit um, that there was never any kind of identification. All they say is, yes, these two black males did X, Y, Z, so there's nothing to, to indicate that the two black males that the police found were in fact the two black males that these victims encountered. State response? State would ask for a, a 24 hour reset in order to find probable cause. All right. All right, the court will grant a 24 hour reset. Bond will remain as previously set at 10,000 on count one and um, 100 on count two, and we'll recall it tomorrow. respect to the other case, um, oh, the petty theft, is it the same argument? Yes, Your Honor. All right, and state, same request? Yes, Your Honor. All right, so as to the petty theft, the court will also leave the bond to set and uh, we'll set it for a 24 hour review. All right, Jermaine. Reese Frith? Yes. All right, Mr. Reese Frith, I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you. I do find there is sufficient probable cause with respect to the offense of a burglary of an unoccupied dwelling. Uh, counsel, do you wish to be heard with respect to release? Yes, Your Honor, briefly. Um, it appears to me that based on PTR's information, um, Mr. Reese Frith, is that Reese yeah, Frith? Yeah, yeah. Um, has zero failures to appear. Um, he's informed me that the amount he can afford is approximately $200. So based on that, I'd, I'd be asking for a bond in the amount of $2,000. I'd also note that he has a relatively minimal history Any relevant history the court should be aware of? Um, he has um, two felonies, two misdemeanors, 11 unknown. Uh, Florida convictions have a battery of LEO, possession of a controlled substance, lottery fraud, and resisting officer without violence. His last conviction was 11 27, 2018, and that was the battery of the LEO in the substance, possession of a controlled substance. He have a um, arrest history were battery time two, battery of a person 65 year old and resisting arrest. Time two, possession of controlled substance. Um, battery DV, damage property, burglary occupied dwelling, trespass. All right, state. The state would defer to the court's discretion. All right, given his history, the court believes that the bond is previously said is appropriate. Um, so at this time, but we'll only add the condition that he now returned to the scene where this incident occurred. All right, thank you, sir. Jackson Robbins. Here you go. Yeah, yes, Your Honor. All right. All right, Mr. Robbins, I will appoint the public defender to represent you. Before previously having found probable cause, uh, counsel, do you wish to be heard with regards to release? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Your 
Governor, I don't have argument at this time. Um, I apologize. I had him marked as someone who wasn't coming to court, so I don't have his sheet out in front of me. All right. So at this point, uh, count one is a, a, an offense that's punishable by life. The court will leave the bond as no bond and will not make any findings with regards to proof evident. With respect to count two, sexual battery, the court leaves bond as previously, previously said at 50,000. Um, and the court will require no contact with the victim. Berthel Wiley. You're Mr. Wiley? Yes, sir. All right. Mr. Wiley, I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you. And uh, counsel, I do find that there is sufficient probable cause you wish to be heard with regards to release. Yes, Your Honor, just based on the nature of, of the offense, um, and I do have information uh, that Mr. Wiley appears to be on Social Security Disability. Um, which leads me to believe that he has an inability to afford a monetary bond. So I'd just be asking for ROR and the alternative, a minimum bond. All right, and PTR, is he eligible for any sort of PTR? No, he's not eligible for PTR. All right, State? State has no position at this time. The court will set bond at $100. The condition will be that he not return to the property from which he was trespassed. That will be the only condition. Right. Matthew Kinney. Right. And this is an out of county violation of probation. Uh, Mr. Kinney, you're going to be transported to Lake County. Um, if you'd like, you can ask the judge to set a bond uh, at that time, all right? Yes, sir. Jeffrey Finley? Yes, there you go. All right. And Mr. Finley, I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you. Do you find that there is sufficient probable cause for the offensive open container of an alcoholic beverage? Counsel, do you wish to be heard with regards to release? Your Honor, Mr. Finley's interested in an offer from the court or the state to resolve the case. I right, say, do you wish to make an offer at this time? The state's offer would be a withhold credit time served. Do you want a, an opportunity to review a plea form with him? Yeah. I have not, Your Honor. He does have a copy. Um, did you review it in the back? Did you read that in the back? Yeah, no, not read it. Yeah, he says he's he's read it in the back. Okay. All right, Mr. Finley, do you need any additional time to speak with your attorney with regards to whether or not you should enter into this plea? Yes, sir, uh, Your Honor. You would like additional time? No, sir. All right. So you're, you're all set and you understand the rights contained on this plea form? Yes, sir, Your Honor. All right. And you understand uh, that by entering this plea, you're waiving the right to be presumed innocent until proven guilty. You understand that? 
Yes, sir, Your Honor. Do you understand that you're waiving the right to confront any witnesses? Yes, sir, uh, Your Honor. That might be testifying against you as well as any witnesses in your defense? Yes, sir. Do you understand that you're waiving the right to call any witnesses or have the court subpoena any witnesses in your defense? Yes, sir, Your Honor. Do you understand that you're waiving the right uh, to remain silent and not have that fact considered by me or a jury? Yes, sir. Do you understand that you're waiving the right to, be, to testify at trial in your defense? Yes, sir. Do you understand that you're waiving uh, the right to require the state to prove the case against you beyond a reasonable doubt? Yes, sir, Your Honor. And uh, are you currently on any medication or any other uh, treatment that could affect your ability to understand what we're doing here today? Yes, sir, I'm all at the present time. All right, you suffer from any mental illnesses that could affect your ability to understand what we're doing here today? No, sir, Your Honor. All right, do you understand that if you're not a U.S. citizen that you would be subject to deportation by entering this plea? Yes, sir, Your Honor. Do you understand that if you've ever been uh, convicted of a sexually motivated or sexually violent offense that you might be subjected to involuntary civil commitment as a sexually violent predator upon the completion of this sentence. Yes, sir, Your Honor. Are you under the influence of any drugs or alcohol at this time? No, sir, Your Honor. All right, so at this time, do you wish to enter a plea to the charge of possession of an open container and alcoholic beverage? And how do you plea? No contest, Your Honor. All right, I'll accept that plea. I find that you're alert and intelligent, that you understand the rights that you're waiving and that you're doing so voluntarily. I will therefore uh, accept the state's, or accept the plea as the state has offered it, which is a withhold of adjudication, credit time served, and court costs. Court, uh, court costs of 223 at $223. Um, we'll reduce it to a civil judgment. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, thank you. Alan Murphy. Yes, Your Honor. All right. And I will appoint the public defender to represent you in this case. All right. Um, I do find that there is uh, sufficient probable cause with respect to the charge of camping. Counsel, do you wish to uh, talk with your client about resolving this case? Yes, Your Honor. Your Honor, Mr. Murphy, um would request an offer from the state or the court to resolve the case. State? The offer be, would be a withhold credit time serving for cost. All right. Is that offer acceptable to you, Mr. Murphy? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Why don't you take a look at the form? All right, Mr. Murphy, do you need additional time to speak with your attorney with regards to entering this plea? No, Your Honor. All right, and did you have an opportunity to review the plea form? Yes, Your Honor. And did you understand the rights contained on the plea form? Yes, Your Honor. And do you understand by entering this plea, you're waiving the right to go to trial and the rights associated with trial? Yes, Your Honor. Do you understand you're waiving the right to require the state to prove against the case against you beyond a reasonable doubt? Yes. Do you understand that you're waiving the right to call any witnesses or to cross-examine any of the state's witnesses? Yes. Do you understand that you're waiving the right to testify or not to testify on your own behalf? Yes. And you understand you're waiving the right to appeal um, based on the facts of the case if you had gone to trial? Yes. Uh, you understand that by entering this plea, you could be subjected to involuntary civil commitment 
under the Jimmy Rice Act as a sexually violent predator? Yes. And you understand that um, by entering this plea, if you are not a U.S. citizen, you would be subject to deportation? Yes. Has anybody threatened you or forced you to enter this plea against your will? No. Are you entering into this plea because you believe it's in your best interest? Yes. Are you under the influence of any alcohol, drugs, or any other medication that could affect your ability to understand this proceeding? No. Do you suffer from any mental or physical disabilities that would uh, inhibit your ability to understand this proceeding? No. All right, I do find that you're alert and intelligent. Do you understand the rights you're weaving? Um, so at this time, how do you plead to the offense of camping? No contest, Your Honor. All right, I'll accept that plea and sentence you um, to a withhold of adjudication, credit time served, and court costs in the amount of 223, and we'll reduce that to a civil judgment. Thank you, Your Honor. You're welcome. Travis White. Are you Mr. White? Yes, sir. Mr. White, I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you. I do find there is sufficient probable cause with respect to the offense of camping. Uh, defense, uh, do you want to speak with Mr. White about uh, resolving his case? I did, Your Honor. Mr. White would like to resolve the case. All right. And State, is there an offer on this? State's offer would be a withhold and credit time serve and core costs. All right. And Mr. White, do you want to accept that offer? All right, why don't you take a second to speak with your lawyer? All right, Mr. White, uh, do you need additional time to speak with your attorney? Yes, sir. All right, did you have an opportunity to review the plea form? Yes, sir. And did you understand the rights contained on the plea form? Yes, sir. And you understand that by entering this plea, you're waiving the rights associated with a trial? Yes, sir. You understand that you're waiving the right to require the state to prove the case against you beyond a reasonable doubt? Yes, sir. You understand you're waiving the right to call witnesses? of your own as well as to confront the state's witnesses? Yes, sir. You understand you're waiving the right to testify or not testify on your own behalf? Yes, sir. You understand that you're waiving the right to have a, a judge or jury decide your guilt in this case? Yes, sir. All right, and you understand that if you are a sexually, if you've ever been convicted of a sexually violent or sexually motivated offense, this plea could subject you to involuntary civil commitment as a sexually violent predator? Yes, sir. Do you understand that if you're not a U.S. citizen, that you would be subject to deportation? Yes, sir. All right. <clears throat> Are you under the influence of any drugs, alcohol, or medication that could affect your ability to understand this proceeding? No, sir. Uh, do you suffer from any mental or physical disabilities that would affect your ability to understand this proceeding? All right, I, at this time, I do find you're alert and intelligent. Do you understand the rights you're weaving? Um, with respect to the offense of camping, how do you plea? All right, I'll accept that plea. I'll sentence you as follows. You're sentenced to a withhold, credit time served, and court costs in the amount of $223, which will be reduced to a civil judgment. All right, thank you, sir. All right, James Johnson. Yes, sir. All right, Mr. Johnson, I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you. 
with respect to the offenses of tampering with a witness to hinder communication with law enforcement and battery domestic violence. I do find that there is sufficient probable cause with respect to those offenses. Um, counsel, do you wish to be heard with respect to bond? Oh, we have a witness? All right, so um, ma'am, yes. can you please state your name? Iris Johnson. All right, and are you the victim in this case? Yes, sir. All right, and ma'am, do you have any concerns with regards to your safety? No, sir. All right. Um, with respect to the allegations here, if are you asking that the court allow contact between you and Mr. Johnson? Yes, sir. And if um, by any chance there were to be some sort of uh, escalation or heated argument or violence, would you hesitate to contact law enforcement in the future? No, sir. State, do you have any additional questions? Yes, Your Honor, one moment. Has there been previous uh, domestic incidences before? No, sir. Do you have any uh, children together? Yes, sir. Were they present during this incident? No, sir. He, she's out of state. And did you try to to leave during this incident? Yes, sir. Did he prevent you from leaving? No. And once again, are you in fear? No, sir. But I, I do have a request, if I can request. I request that he gets um, help for his drug abuse instead of going to jail. He doesn't need to be in jail. I went down to the courthouse yesterday and I filed a March Men Act for him to be, for him to get help. I, I gave it to I gave the Marchman Act to the cops yesterday. All right. Defense, any questions? Not at this time, Your Honor. All right. And PTR, anything uh, additional with respect to uh, any relevant history of Mr. Johnson? No, sir. All right. So, with regards to release, defense. I'd just be asking for no hostile contact based on the victim's testimony today. All right, as to count one, the court will set bond at $2,500. With respect to count two, bond, court will set bond at $100. Um, the uh, conditions of bond is that he have no hostile contact with the victim, that he not consume or possess any alcohol, drugs, or any uh, medicine without a prescription. Um, he's going to be required not to possess any weapons. Anything additional from the state? The state would just like to put on the record that we would object to no hostile contact and ask for no contact based on the arrest affidavit, which stated that um, the victim asked the defendant for a cell phone in order to call the police, and he refused to give it to her, and she asked... Um, and she had to go to the neighbor's house in, in order to call 911. I couldn't find my phone. Because it, when the cops went in the house, they did find my phone. I couldn't find it. And I thought he had it, but he didn't. Okay. All right, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. I love you. Yes, with regards to the felony driving while license suspended, bond was previously set at 2,500. I do find there is sufficient probable cause with respect to that offense. Um, with regards to bond, defense, you wish to be heard? With regards to bond, it's oh. on the DeWillis. No, no, I'm sorry, Your Honor. All right. Um, no. All right, state. Anything additional? No, Your Honor. We, we would just ask that uh, certain conditions be placed. Which conditions? Uh, to not operate a motor vehicle without a valid driver's license. 
All right. Uh, so the court will leave the bond that's previously set at $2,500. I will impose the additional condition that you not drive unless you possess a valid driver's license. Yes, sir. All right. All right. Thank you. Robert McDonnie. Yes, sir. All right, Mr. McDonnie, I will appoint the public defender to represent you. I'm sorry. I will appoint the public defender to represent you. Okay. I do find there is sufficient probable cause with respect to aggravated battery on a person uh, 65 years of age or older. Uh, defense, you wish to be heard with respect to bond? Yes, Your Honor, just briefly. Your Honor, at this point, I, I would just ask for a $500 bond on the misdemeanor violation um, and a $1,500 bond on the aggravated battery on a person uh, 65 or older. The request is based on my information that there are no failures to appear and no felony convictions. All right. All right, State. State would defer to the court's discretion and just ask that certain conditions be imposed. So at this point, with regards to the uh, contempt of court, the violation of domestic injunction um, for which the victim in the aggravated battery was the protected person, the court will uh, set bond at $1,000 with the following conditions, that Mr. McDonnie now return to the residence, that he have no contact with Becky McDonnie, um, that he not possess any weapons. With respect to the aggravated battery, uh, the court will set bond at $10,000, same conditions, no contact with the victim, Becky McDonnie, no return to the residence, and no possession of weapons. O'Hare, is it O'Hare, I'm sorry, is it O'Hara? Yes, sir. All right. The court having previously found probable cause as to count one and to count two, um, defense, would you like to be heard? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm gonna appoint the public defender to represent Mr. O'Hara. Uh, defense, would you like to be heard with respect to bond? If I could just have a moment, Your Honor. Sure. Your Honor, at this point, um, as for count one, I would just be requesting a bond in the amount of $2,000. Um, and as to count two, I would be requesting a bond in the amount of $1,500. All right. And uh, state? Nothing from the state, just uh, conditions be imposed. All right. Um, with respect to count one, Court will set bond at 15000 With respect to count two, bond will remain as previously set. 
conditions of bond will be no contact with the victim. Um, not to uh, not to possess any weapons. And those are the conditions of PTR. Thank you. Like no, so I will order no return to the residence of the victim. And no return to the residence of the victim. Your Honor, as to count two, I don't have the warrant in front of me. What was it originally set up? Uh, harassing communication. It's 1500. And it was, I'm sorry, 1500. Derek Williams. Yes, good morning, Your Honor. I mean, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Sorry about that. That's right. How's your day going? Good. Good. All right. So, Mr. Williams, I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you with respect to count one abuse of elderly or disabled adult. The court finds that there is sufficient probable cause with respect to battery by strangulation, domestic violence. The court finds that there is a sufficient probable cause with respect to that offense. Counsel, do you wish to be heard with respect to bond? Your Honor, I have a brief uh, probable cause challenge as to count two. Go ahead. The battery by strangulation. Um, I don't see any facts in the affidavit uh, that would tend to show the court that the breathing was restricted. The breathing of the victim, excuse me, was restricted in any way. Um, and so because there's no specific facts as to that element, it doesn't meet probable cause for battery by strangulation. All right, State. State would argue that there is probable cause based on the rest affidavit saying that he was <coughs> wrapped both hands around the neck in the two-handed front choke hold. So Again, the court does find that there is probable cause um, with respect to bond. Uh, Your Honor, as to count one, um, I would just request the amount of $1,000 and the same for count two. Um, Mr. Williams is on Social Security disability, um, and he's represented to me that the maximum he can afford is $200. All right, and state. State would defer to the court's discretion. All right. Bond on count one will be set at $5,000. Bond on count two will be set at $100. Conditions of bond will be no contact with the victim, no return to the residence, no possession of any weapons. Can I say something, Your Honor? Uh, I would advise you to speak to your this, attorney. This is a fact, yes. Yeah. I didn't strangle well, it's, him. It's, it's, it's better not yeah, to I didn't, say anything at all. Again, no, sir, everything we do in this courtroom is recorded. Okay, I'm and okay. Anything that you say that the state attorney can use. I understand, Your Honor, and I, and I appreciate it, though. I understand it, though. Um, I take care of my grandmother. They got it, they got it in here that, that he takes care of my grandmother. I didn't, you can call my mom and ask her. I never done anything to hurt my grandmother. I take care of my grandmother. I've been there for a year. My nephew and me got into it. We, my sister called the police, and she she was somewhere on the job somewhere. So, sir, my mother, my, my grandmother never called the police. Sir, what I, what I will tell you to do is to speak with your attorney. She can bring a motion before the judge handling the case, and you can argue with respect to the conditions the court has imposed at this time. Okay? I can't afford a five thousand dollar bond. I'm, well, I can, can go stay with my mother. You can speak to your attorney about having the court reconsider it. If you want to call witnesses to that hearing, you're welcome to do so, okay? And how long will it be for, for my bond gets heard again? You need to talk to your attorney about that. How long will it be for that gets heard again? All right. Mark Edmund.
Edmund. Good evening, sir. I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you. Correct. With respect to battery domestic violence. The court does find there is sufficient probable cause with respect to that offense. With respect to release, defense, you wish to be heard? Yes, Your Honor. Um, and... I'm sure PTR, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, it appears to me that Mr. Edmund would qualify if he can provide an alternative address that can be confirmed. So I, I just asked the court to give him a chance, another chance to do that um, in order PTR if he qualifies or in the alternative, a minimum bond as he appears to have little criminal history. All right, PTR. He was, um, during the time of the interview, he was uh, providing different information regardless to employment. So at that time, he wasn't the truth, I guess, by his employment, and he was unable to verify his community ties. And he did not, he did not wish to provide any contacts prior to uh, removal upon arrest. All right. State? State would defer to the court's discretion and ask that certain con conditions be imposed. And PTR, with regards to history, is there any relevant history? Any relevant history? Um, his last conviction was in 2009 with a grand theft. And um, he has one felony, zero misdemeanors, zero failure to appear. All right. All right, so with respect to that, I'm going to set bond at $1,000. Uh, I'm going to have him... I'm going to require that he have not that he not have any contact with the victim whatsoever. That you not possess any weapons. That um, were you living at the residence at the time of this offense? Um, I was, but I do have another residence. All right, so I'm going to require that you maintain separate residences, mm -hmm. and you, that you not return that you not return to the residence um, unless escorted by law enforcement to retrieve any personal items. You can go back one time with law enforcement to pick up personal items. All right. And, and your honor, would, would the court be willing to order $1,000 or PTR if he gives qualifying information? I know that before he chose not to. Sometimes uh, I think people that aren't too familiar with the system are a little reluctant to share this information before they understand how it's going to impact them going forward. I think now that he understands it's well. his only way out of jail, I think he's going to be willing to provide accurate information. Okay. During the time of the uh, interview, we always explain to them what the interview is for. We always let them know there's an update for you guys, uh, for you, the judge, the state attorney, and the PD to verify his information, his background. So at that time, he was aware of what he needed to provide. Um, and again, uh, Mr. Edmund had an opportunity to disclose that information. I have concerns about his truthfulness at this point, so I'd rather him just set a bond and follow the conditions uh, imposed by the court to assure his compliance with the court order. Alexander Germain. Yes. All right, Mr. Germain, I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you. find that there is sufficient probable cause with respect to the offense of battery dating violence. Uh, counsel, do you wish to be heard with regards to release? Yes, Your Honor. I'd just be asking for pretrial release. It appears that he does qualify and has a low risk assessment. All right. And PTR? Yes, he does. All right. And he state? Qualifies. Nothing from the state, just certain conditions be imposed. All right. What conditions? Uh, 
no return, no contact. No weapon. All right, um, Mr. Germain, I'm going to release you on PTR with the condition that you not have any contact with the victim whatsoever, that you not return to the residence. Were you living together at the time of this incident? No. Okay. Uh, so then there's no reason to go back there, uh, and that you not possess any weapons. Okay. Gary James? Yes. All right. And Mr. James, I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you. All right. I do find there is sufficient probable cause for the offense of battery, domestic violence, and criminal mischief. Counsel, do you wish to be heard with respect to uh, bond? Yes, Your Honor, at this point I'd be asking for ROR. Um, it appears to me from PTR's information that Mr. James has no criminal history whatsoever um, in terms of convictions, that is. Um, and he was able to provide community ties to pretrial release and does have a place where he can reside. All right, and uh, PTR, does he qualify? Yes, he qualifies for PTR. All right, and state? They would just ask uh, for certain con conditions to be imposed. What conditions? Which would be the no contact, no return, and uh, no weapon. All right. So the court will release uh, Mr. James on PTR with the following conditions. That you not have any contact with the victim whatsoever. That you not return to the residence. Uh, you guys were living together at the time of this incident? Yes, my love. All right, so you'll have one opportunity to return to the residence to retrieve any personal belongings, uh, and you're not to possess any weapons. Okay. All right. Okay. All right, Alex Ruiz Gonzalez. Yes. All right, I will appoint the public defender to represent you. All right, I do find there is sufficient probable cause with respect to the offense of battery domestic violence. Defense, you wish to uh, make any argument with respect to bond? Um, yes, Your Honor. I see that Mr. Ruiz Gonzalez qualifies for pretrial release and has a low risk assessment. All right. And then PTR, does he qualify? Yes, he does qualify. All right. And state? State would just ask for no contact, no return, and no weapons. All right. I will place, um, I will release Mr. Ruiz Gonzalez on PTR with the conditions that you not have any contact with the victim whatsoever. Uh, Mr. Ruiz Gonzalez, were you and the victim living together at the time of this incident? Yes, sir. All right, so you'll be allowed to return to the residence one time, accompanied by law enforcement to retrieve any personal belongings, but after that, you're gonna have to maintain a separate residence. You're not gonna be allowed to possess any weapons either, all right? All right, thank you. Yes. Can you help him to provide an alternate address because uh, during the time of the interview, he stated that they did not li live together. Okay. So we need an alternative address. All right. So can you provide a, an address of where you're going to be living to PTR? Yeah. Okay. Can you put it to let me know? Go ahead. You want it? Like, say it. 262 Sharp Street, Apopka, Florida. 32712. Let me repeat that. 262 Sharp. Sharp. S H A R P. Mm -hmm. Street. E. Street. No, just a B. Is that a Popka? Popka, Florida. 32712. That's my um, mom's house. Okay, what's your mom's first and last name? Naomi Gonzalez. And her phone number? 47. I got a. <laughs> uh, 
find there is sufficient probable cause with respect to this offense of battery domestic violence. Uh, Counselor, do you wish to be heard with regards to bond? Yes, Your Honor. Um, Your Honor, it, it appears to me that Ms. Wolf um, was not qualified for pretrial release. However, she's informed me that she's unable to pay a uh, monetary bond in this case, so we'd be requesting that she be released on her own recognizance. Um, she is willing to, um, under oath, provide the address at which she will be residing um, so that she can continue to make court appearances. All right, and um, State, anything additional? State would ask uh, PTR for any history related to a Four misdemeanors, uh, two failed to appear. The last one was um, February 2014, 16 unknown. She has one conviction as drug veneer, type two, possession of controlled substance, type two, possession of cocaine with intent to sell deliver, tampering with evidence. Her last conviction was um, May 2018, driving while license suspended with knowledge. Don't have any out of state history. She have a rest history. Possession of drugs, possession, DOP type eight, possession of cocaine times two, Xanax, drug equipment times two, drug while license suspended, smuggling, contraband, prostitution, and the um, marijuana. State would defer to court's discretion in setting bond. All right. With respect to the bond, court will set bond at $1,000 with the following conditions. Uh, that she now return to the residence where this occurred. Um, were you living with your mother at the time that this happened, Ms. Wolf? Yeah, I was staying there. All right, so I'll give you one opportunity to return, escorted by law enforcement, to retrieve any personal belongings. Um, but other than that, you're going to have to maintain a separate residence. Mm -hmm. You're also going to be required not to have any contact with her whatsoever. Uh, you're not to possess any weapons, and you're not to consume any drugs, alcohol, or any illicit substances, and no medications without a uh, valid prescription. All right. Quandarius Burton? Yes, sir. Did I say that right? Yes, sir. Quandarius. Okay. All right. Mr. Burton, um, it looks like you failed to appear. The court previously having found probable cause and having set bond at zero, I will appoint the public defender to represent you. Um, <clears throat> defense, any argument with respect to bond? Judge, um, I, I understand that Judge Adams has set bond at no bond. Mr. Burton would like the court to know that his bondsman is willing to stay on the bond um, and that he does have children that he's responsible for taking care of. Um, I, I informed him that I, I did notify his attorney he was here and he has a court date coming up very soon. All right, and, and uh, state your position. Nothing from the state. All right, given the allegations, the court will leave bond as, as previously set, and you can bring that issue before 
Judge Adams on September 12th. I believe is your court date. December 12th. Yeah, but he, he'll go before and have a court date. Okay. All right, so you can bring that issue before Judge Adams at that time. Okay. Econo <coughs> Coleman. Coleman, yes, I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you. Yes, sir. I do find that there is sufficient probable cause for possession of MDMA ecstasy. Counsel, do you wish to be heard with regards to bond? <coughs> yes, Your Honor. One moment, please. Just a question, Your Honor, if, um, if Mr. Coleman was able to provide the appropriate community ties um, with the court order pretrial release? That'd be up to PTR. At this time, it appears he does not qualify. He does not qualify. Can you do bond in the amount of $1,000 or pretrial release if he's able to provide that information? PTR, is there any other reason he doesn't qualify? He was unable to um, contact the emergency contact to verify community ties, and um, he was not able to provide an address and uh, employment information. So the community ties, community ties was not verifiable. All right, state. Nothing from the state. That's all. All right. So at this point, if he can verify um, community ties, the court will allow him to be released on PTR. Otherwise, we'll have to set a bond of $1,000. Sir, I gave it to him last night, sir. I have all that. All right. all right. So they'll need to verify that. All right. All right. All right. Condition of PTR. Or PTR. Okay. Right. And the condition of PTR or bond is that he not consume or possess any illicit substances or medications without a prescription. Quavari Cummings. Yes, sir. All right. Mr. Cummings, I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you. Counsel, do you wish to make any argument with respect to PC? No, Your Honor. All right, the court finds that there is PC with regards to the charge of petty theft, two prior convictions. Bond was previously set at $1,000. Counsel, do you wish to be heard with respect to bond? No, Your Honor. All right, state, anything additional? State would ask just for no return. All right, so the court will leave the bond as previously set at $1,000 with the additional condition that he not return to the scene where the uh, incident took place, and that's the Home Depot over at Where the, the Home Depot where this is alleged to have occurred. Your Honor. I can't locate the address. It's a 13121 South Orange Blossom Trail. Thank you. All right. Kenneth Deckel. He refused, Your Honor. All right. So we'll reset that.
Kelvin Gaines. Yeah. All right, Mr. Gaines, I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you. There was an arrest warrant issued with regards to this case, uh, previously having found probable cause. Um, bond was set at 3,500 as to count one, 500 as to count two, and 100 as to count three. Total bond of 4,100. Uh, defense, do you wish to be heard with respect to bond? Yes, Your Honor. All right, go forward. Uh, it appears that this is an add-on charge um, from an offense occurring on July 19th. I believe uh, Mr. Gaines has already been incarcerated. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so I would just be asking for a minimum bond, $1,000 on count one and 100 on the two uh, misdemeanor counts as a subsidiary. Right, and what are you basing that on? I don't, you you provide me with a case number? Sure. Um, 19CF7143 AO, um, 19CF1173, or excuse me, 19CF1173 AO. Um, and there's also an additional misdemeanor case, 19MM6872AO. Right, and uh, see, can you verify any of those other cases? So the 17, the 19 CF 7143 is a complaint that was filed in May. So th that's not related to the arrest warrant here because this is an offense that took place in July. Correct. So let's look at the 19 CF 1173. CF one one seven three three. So the uh, C 19 CF11733 is an incident that took place on August 17th. This is an incident that took place on July 19th. So again, that's a different incident. Okay, correct, Your Honor. So then the last one is 19 MM7872. I mean, sorry, 6872. Incidents also from August 17th. So it's a different incident from what's alleged in this arrest warrant. Anything additional from defense? Mm, no, Your Honor. Anything else from state? 
Your Honor. All right, so the court will leave the bones as previously set with the additional conditions that he not return to the scene uh, where this uh, incident is alleged to have occurred. Said that for tomorrow. Matthew Hamilton. Yes, sir. Appoint the public defender to represent you. All right, in all of your cases. So with respect to, um, there's the 20 cases. <laughs> 21 cases. All right, with respect to 21 cases, the 21 cases, it appears they all stem from the same set of operative facts. Is there any challenge to any of the PC in any specific case? Yes, Your Honor. Um, What's the case number? So, uh, just to put this in a general sense, because there are 21 cases, the issue that I'm having for PC is that there's the same affidavit for, it appears, almost every single one of these cases, but we don't have any information telling us which specific item or car or anything that, that supports each allegation of burglary of a conveyance, criminal mischief, or petty theft. And so when we're reading that the officer says a group of incidents happened at 1545 Providence Circle, maybe arguably there'd be PC for one of those incidents, but without a VIN number or at least a make and model of every vehicle that that they're alleging he broke into, I don't think that this can support PC for 21 counts. All right, and state your response. Full moment, Your Honor.
Gardner, maybe we get a 24 hour reset in order to. Uh, All right. In order to find probable cause for each of these. All right. Uh, bonds will remain as previously set. We'll allow the state 24 hour review. Carlton Jackson. All right, Mr. Jackson, I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you. Find there is sufficient probable cause with respect to the offense of robbery, stab, and snatching, and also needs to be heard with respect to bond. Not at this time, Your Honor. All right, State, anything additional? Just for no contact with the victim. All right, bond will remain as previously set. At $1,000, the court will require no contact with the victim. So that means I'm going to relief? If you set bond. Bond is set at $1,000. Uh, Eddie Jenkins. All right, Mr. Jenkins, I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you in this case. Defense with regards to PC, do you wish to be heard? Yes, Your Honor. Um, although the affidavit alleges trafficking um, in the four corners of the affidavit, there's no amount listed. And so, and, and even as to count two, the sale delivery, I don't think the affidavit even lists uh, sufficient particularity to actually show that there was a drug deal. Um, I think there's one line about seeing people or two individuals leaning against uh, the car, leaning inside the car, but there's no facts indicating that drugs were actually put into the hands of someone else or that those two individuals did in fact buy drugs. Um, so that being said, I would argue that there's simply PC for uh, simple possession. All right, and state response. In the arrest affidavit, it, it, it seemed that the officer stated that it appeared to, there to be an exchange of unknown items at the window, uh, at the window with the driver, which was believed to be a hand-to-hand -hand drug transaction. But in terms of weight, uh, the state would ask for a 24-hour reset in order to identify uh, what was the amount collected at this incident. So at this point, um, based on the, the uh, movements, packaging, and denominations of currency, the court does find there is sufficient PC for counts two, for sale delivery fen fentanyl, and count three, possession of fentanyl. However, I'll give um, uh, counsel or the state an opportunity to um, supplement the affidavit with regards to the trafficking as it only alludes to a um, supplemental report which states that 
uh, grams of fentanyl were located. There's no real information as to how or where those quantities were obtained. Um, so uh, with regards to counts two and three, the court will set bond um, as to count two at 2,500, as to count three, 100, and as to count one, it will remain at no bond and the, the uh, state will have an opportunity to supplement the affidavit 24 hour review. So now we have to um, address the fleeing and eluding. I do find there is a probable cause with respect to the fleeing and eluding, as well as the um, driving with license suspended. Um, Council, do you wish to be heard with regards to the bond, bond on the um, driving with license suspended is $500, and as to the um, fleeing and eluding, there's no bond. I would just ask the court set a bond on the fleeing to loot. It's an F3, so I'd ask for $1,000. State? State would just ask for um, the defendant not be allowed to operate a motor vehicle without a dr valid driver's license. All right, so court will set bond on the fleeing and eluding at $1,000 with the condition that he not drive unless he possess a valid driver's license. As to the um, driving while license suspended, Bond will remain as previously said at $500 with the condition that he not drive unless he possess a valid driver's license. The fleeing and looting is 1,000. The other one stays the same at 500. Right. All right, Joshua Jernigan. All right, Mr. Jernigan, I'm gonna appoint the public defender to represent you. All right, so with respect to counts one, two, three, and four, the court finds that there is sufficient probable cause with respect to possession of cannabis with intent, possession of hydrocodone with intent, <clears throat> possession of cannabis greater than 20, and trafficking in oxycodone. Um, do you wish to be heard with respect to uh, bond? Yes, Your Honor. Go ahead. Um, I do you have information that Mr. Jernigan has uh, no criminal history, um, zero convictions, zero failures to appear? According to PTR, um, he, PTR was able to verify um, Mr. Jernigan's address and verify that he has ties to the Orlando area, so I don't think there's, the court should have any concern as to his appearance for future court dates. Um, Additionally, this isn't a PC argument, but a weight of the evidence argument for, for the court to consider as um, the, when it sets conditions of release. This search was based entirely on the smell of cannabis. And um, recently in July, the um, law changed on hemp. And as such, the uh, state attorney has a new policy of um, changing the way that they prosecute cannabis cases because the FDLE is not currently able to differentiate between cannabis and hemp. Florida Highway Patrols also put out a statewide memo saying that they will no longer arrest based on the smell of cannabis alone because they're unable to differentiate cannabis from hemp. It smells the same, it looks the same. Um, and it even tests the same for purposes of FDLE. So I understand um, that this is just for conditions of release, but based on the fact that the search itself was based on conduct that is questionable, um, I, I would just ask the court to consider both the state's policy and Florida Highway Patrol's policy 
um, in setting conditions of release on particularly the, the trafficking case as it does have an extremely high bond amount. All right, Ms. Tate. Given that he qualifies for PTR, the court um, will do bond with PTR. Um, the court will set count one at $100, count two at $2,500, count three at $100, and count four at $10,000. PTR conditions will be that he verify residence. Um, so he's going to have to notify PTR of where he's living, and if that address changed, he's going to have to notify them of where he's moved to prior to moving. Um, it will require that he not consume or possess any illegal substances um, or any medications without a prescription valid prescription, that you not possess any weapons. All right, anything additional from the state? No, Your Honor. Johnson. All right, Mr. Johnson, I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you. I do find there is sufficient probable cause for the offense for the offense of petty theft, second degree, with the third subsequent offense. As uh, the judge has previously found PC and the arrest warrant attached. With regards to bond, do you wish to be heard? Not on that case, Your Honor. Well, it's set at zero bond. Am I looking at the right case? Is it a... Uh, yeah, petty theft, two or more priors, and the bond was set at zero bond. Is that right? So bond will remain at a thousand with the condition that uh, do not return to the scene where that incident is alleged to have occurred. With respect to um, the, the the second case, the second petty theft case, I do find there is sufficient probable cause. Um, bond was set at five hundred dollars. Will remain set at five hundred. Then the next case is robbery with a with a weapon, um, resisting an officer without violence. Your Honor, I think Mr. Johnson is a co-defendant in the case where... Yeah. So I would just adopt the same argument that I made as to probable cause. I think we ordered a 24-hour reset on the code. All right, so with regards to that one, bond will remain as previously set as to the robbery with a weapon with a 24-hour review, the resisting with an officer without violence, will uh, court finds probable cause and it will remain set at $100. Joanne 
Massey. All right, we'll reset that for tomorrow. John Oliver. Yes, sir. All right. Based on the arrest affidavit uh, provided to the court, PC was established. Um, bond was set at 50,000 as to count one, 1,000 as to count two. Counsel, do you wish to be heard with regards to bond? No, no, Your Honor. All right. And counsel, uh, with regards to Nebby Hold, do you wish to make any motion? Um, I just asked the court to to not impose a nebby a hold. Um, there's been recent case law. Don't have the citations in front of me um, from the fifth and the second um, saying that at initial appearance, the judge doesn't have the authority to impose a separate nebby condition. The judge can um, consider a defendant's financial abilities and where the court thinks that money came from but as far as an independent nebula hold the court found that that's not in compliance with the way that the statute has articulated all right and uh state nothing from the state your honor all right so the court will strike the nebula hold provision bond will remain as previously set um the additional conditions of the bond will be uh, no, pos no possess uh, any illicit drugs uh, or any medications without a valid prescription. No possession of weapons. Latanya Oliver. Sorry, Judge, could I just have a moment to sure. speak with him? Ms. Oliver? Yes. I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you. And this was a KPS that was issued for failure to appear um, in 18 CF 18063. Um, there were four counts. Counsel, do you wish to be heard with regards to bond? No, Your Honor. All right, court will leave bond as previously set. Um, Ma'am, you can have your attorney request a bond from the attorney who's gonna be handling the case, okay? So we'll take no action on your open case. Okay? Like I said, I emailed Ashley already. All right. Mark Perez. I'm Perez. sorry. Angel Pagan. How you doing? Good. I don't have an affidavit from him. Oh, Judge, he is Mark Perez. Oh, it's the same person? Uh, no, I think I just... We don't have
And your name, sir? My name is Mark Perez. Mark Perez, okay. All right, Mr. Perez, I'm gonna appoint the public defender to represent you. All right, do you have an arrest warrant where a judge found probable cause with, res with respect to the fraudulent use of a credit card, grand theft third degree, and criminal use of personal ID? Bond was set at 3,500 on count one, 100 on count two, and 100 on count three. There's also two conditions, one that you not return to the scene where this incident occurred and no contact with the victim. Counsel, do you wish to be heard with respect to bond? Just on count one, Judge, I would just ask, um, I think it's an F3, I just asked for a $1,000 bond. State? Nothing from the state, Your Honor. All right, I'm gonna leave it as previously set. Joseph Rodriguez Villa. Yes, sir. All right. Mr. Villa, I'm gonna appoint the public defender to represent you. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, sir, based on your affidavit, you do not qualify. But I do have an affidavit for your arrest, finding probable cause with respect to attempted first degree murder with a firearm. Bond was set at no bond. Um, so the court will at this point uh, make no findings with respect to uh, proof evident or presumption great. Um, and the bond will remain as at no bond. Anything additional from state? No, Your Honor. Anything additional from defense? I know you're not appointed, but as a friend of the court, was there anything else you wanted to add? Um, I just. I don't know if Mr. Rodriguez Villa would want the opportunity to set this off for 24 hours and hire an attorney or if, or if he just wants to go through initial appearance without one. Um, that would be my, my only input in the situation because he doesn't qualify so I'm not even temporarily appointed. Um, All right, so let me ask you this, um, Mr. Rodriguez Villa, do you have any children? Yes, I do. Do you provide any support for them? Yes, I do. How many children do you have? One. I'm sorry, you still don't qualify, but you can file a motion with regards to uh, setting an Arthur hearing anyways uh, with respect to this charge. You can uh, retain counsel or um, if circumstances change, you can always ask to reapply. All right? Thank you. You're welcome. Jamil Thomas. Thank you. Mr. Thomas, I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you. I do find there is sufficient, uh, sufficient evidence to find probable cause with respect to resisting an officer, count one, resisting an officer, count two, and battery on a law enforcement officer. Counsel, do you wish to be heard with respect to bond? Your Honor, I would just ask for, um, on the two misdemeanor offenses, I would just ask for $100 bonds. Wait, hold on, I apologize. Mr. Thomas, do you have any children? Uh, no, sir. All right, currently you do not qualify for the services of the public defender. Um, at this point, um, counsel, if you would like to act as a friend of the court, you're welcome to do so. Um, I'm going to 
I see three words of course. Oh, I see. Okay. So there are four counts of resisting off uh, resisting an officer without violence, one count of bat a battery on law enforcement officer. Oh, two withouts, one with violence, and one badly I apologize. The way the officer wrote the charges is not typical, so it was a little confusing. Um, but uh, just as to the misdemeanors, um, uh, on Mr. Thomas's behalf as a friend of the court, I would just request $100 bonds. Um, and because both of the felonies are third degree felonies, um, I'd request 1500 on each. And I'd also uh, raise to the court's attention that Mr. Thomas does have the public defender on his other open cases. I mean. Um, and uh, Mr. Thomas, I'm just going based off the affidavit you submitted today. So you stated that you make $520 a week. Is that I'm correct? Not, I'm not employed anymore. You're not? Mm -mm. I've, been, I've been without a job for like two and a half, three weeks. All right. Since I came. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to provisionally appoint the public defender at this point. Um, if you would like to fill out another affidavit um, before we leave here today, I'll review it and I'll formally appoint them. So make sure you fill that out properly. All right. All right so counsel, with respect to the arguments that you've made, um, they're well received and state anything additional. No, Your Honor. All right. As to count one and count two, resisting an officer without violence court will set bond at $100 as to each. With respect to count two, resisting an officer with violence, the court will set bond at $1,000. With respect to count four, battery, battery on a law enforcement officer, the court will set bond at $2,500. Uh, conditions of bond will be no possess any weapons. Right. Four is... No, one and two is 100. Yeah, the both of the without violence are 100. With violence, 1,000. That Leo, 2,500. All right, Wesley Andre. Mr. Andre, I'm gonna appoint the public defender to represent you. I do find there is sufficient evidence with regards to driving with license suspended with knowledge. Bond was set at $500. Counsel, do you wish to be heard with respect to bond? I do, Your Honor. Um, not as to the present case. However, I would just ask the court to take no action um, on the case where Mr. Andre is out on bond. Um, I checked our case management system um, and Mr. Andre has been in constant contact with the attorney on that case, Ms. Tharp, um, and I do see that he's set for trial next week in front of Judge Adams. Um, and so I would just ask the court to take no action on, on that case and let him go back to court next week and, and resolve it. Okay. Um, Mr. Andre, are you currently employed? Yes, sir. Where do you work? Barbershop. Barber All right, and how long have you worked there? like eight months. Eight months? Yeah, at this current location. All right. Um, what's the name of the barbershop? Legacy. All right. State? Nothing from the state, Your Honor. All right. I'm going to set bond on the driving with license suspended. I'm going to reduce that to uh, $250, and I'll take no action on the battery. Thank you. You're welcome.
Jose Aponte. Yes, sir. All right. Mr. Aponte, I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you. I do find there is sufficient probable cause with respect to the charge of trespass after warning. Bond is, was set at $500. Counsel, you wish to be heard with respect to that amount. Just briefly, Your Honor. Your Honor, I have no argument as to the present case. I would just ask that Your Honor take no action on the case under which um, Mr. Aponte appears to be out on ROR. All right, and one of the charges in that other case was open container as well as possession of alcohol on the street or sidewalk. Just All right, state. That's from the state, Your Honor. All right, bond will remain as previously set as to trespass on property after warning, after warning, I'm sorry. Um, bond will remain set at $500 with a condition that he not return to the scene where that occurred. With respect to the trafficking in, in four grams or more of heroin, possession of drug paraphernalia, open container, possession with intent, sale and delivery, possession with intent of heroin, uh, sale and delivery, possession of alcohol on the street or sidewalk, the court will revoke bond and he can request a, a new bond from the judge who's handling that case. Your Revoke Honor, could the war. court, um, oh, never mind. I withdraw that, never mind. Charles Call. All right, we'll reset that for um, 24 hours from his release. Oh. We sent him for Monday. <laughs> Stephen Garrison? Yes, sir. All right. All right, Mr. Garrison, I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you. I do find there is sufficient probable cause with respect to the offense. Possession of cocaine, I'm sorry, possession of drug paraphernalia. Um, there's also another citation with regards to open container. The court finds that there is sufficient probable cause, and there's also an armed view with regards to possession of cocaine. So, counsel, with respect to um, those three offenses, uh, do you wish to make any argument with respect to bond? I'm sorry, Judge, I missed the <coughs> part about the on view cocaine. Is that a separate case? Number? Yes, at 19 CF 4037, he's currently out on bond in that case. Oh, I see. Your Honor, just with respect to 4037 AO, um, I would just ask the court if it's inclined to revoke Mr. Garrison's release to set a, a new monetary bond amount. It appears that he was out on pretrial release. And I'd also note for the court that his attorney has filed a motion to suppress in his out on bond case. Um, I don't see a hearing date set at this time. All right. So with regards to the possession of drug paraphernalia, the court will leave bond as previously set. With respect to the possession of alcohol, 
beverage open container the court will leave bond as previously set and with respect to the 2019 CF 4037 the court will revoke bond and uh, he can uh, request a new bond from the judge presiding on the case Jameson. All right, so we reset that. And Can we do that? Okay. All right, John King. Yes. All right, Mr. King, you do not qualify for the services of the public defender. See where they uh, paid my bill. Your Honor, I, I understand the affidavit um, states Mr. King makes 1500 every two weeks. It, it seems to me that that's more of um, an aspirational amount. Mr. King, do you receive any benefits? Hmm? Mr. King, do you receive any benefits? No, I don't. So um, in your application, you stated that you make 1500 every every other week, is that correct? Uh, I haven't started there yet. All right, so you're not currently making any any income? No. All right, so um, what I'll do is I'm gonna provisionally appoint the public defender. I'm gonna ask you to refill out the form with what you're making today as you, as you stand okay. here today, all right? And then uh, once you submit that back to the court, we'll decide if you qualify, all right? Okay. All right, so I do find that there is sufficient probable cause with respect to the trespass on property after warning. Um, defense, would you like to inquire if your client wants to resolve that case today? Mr. King would like an offer to resolve. All right, state. Your Honor, at this time, I'm unaware of the defendant's history, so I'm unable, the state's unable to make an offer at this time. All right, PTR. Have any out of state history. 
and he's also a veteran, eight years honorable discharge with combat service. Will the court make an offer? Yeah, you're, uh, the state does not have an offer. All right, I'll offer him a withhold and credit time served. Okay. With no return to the scene. All right, Mr. King, um, do you need any additional time to speak with uh, the public defender? Do I need to do what? Do you need additional time to speak with the public defender? No, good. All right, and did you have an opportunity to review the plea form? The what? The plea form? That yeah. form that you just signed? Yes. You said we were going to plead not to the crime? Yeah, he's asking. Yes. He's did asking. you? Did you have an opportunity to review the form that you signed, the plea form? Yes. Did you understand the rights contained on the plea form that you're waiving by entering this plea? Yes. I'm going to go over a few of them with you to make sure that you understand them. Do you understand that you're waiving the right to have a trial? Yes. Do you understand you're waiving the right to call any witnesses or to cross-examine any of the state's witnesses? Yes. Do you understand that you're waiving your right to require the state to prove the case against you beyond a reasonable doubt? Yes. Do you understand that you're waiving the right to testify or not to testify on your own behalf? Yes. All right, you understand that you're waiving the right by not having a trial to have the court or the judge or the jury decide your innocence or guilt? Yes. You understand you're waiving the right to appeal based on the facts of the case? Yes. Do you suffer from any mental or physical disabilities that would hinder your ability to understand this proceeding? No. Are you under the influence of any drugs, alcohol, or medication that would limit your ability to understand this, proce this proceeding? No. You understand that by entering this plea, if you've previously been convicted of a sexually violent or sexually motivated offense, that you would be subject to involuntary civil commitment as a sexually violent predator. That's only if you've ever been convicted of a sexually motivated or sexually violent offense. Yeah. Do you understand that if you were, that that would subject you to involuntary civil commitment? Yes. Do you understand that if you were not a U.S. citizen that you would be subject to deportation by entering this plea? Yes. All right. As to the charge of trespass after warning, how do you plead? Guilty. Um, you originally said you wanted to enter a plea of no contest. Do you, uh, do you wish to enter a plea of no contest? What's the difference? No contest. I, I find that you're alert and intelligent, that you understand that the, what rights you're waiving by entering this plea. I therefore will proceed with sentencing. The court will withhold adjudication, sentence you to credit time served, order that you not return to the scene where this incident occurred. And um, what are the court costs? Court costs will be $273. We'll reduce that to a civil judgment. All right, thank you, sir. Ada LaCoya Bell. She refused, Your Honor. All right, 
We'll reset that to tomorrow. Bill Smith, Billy Smith. Yes, sir. All right. I will appoint the public defender to represent you. Mr. Smith, I do find there is sufficient probable cause for the offense of trespass after warning. With respect to bond, um, defense, do you wish to be heard? Yes, Your Honor. Um, although Mr. Smith would be interested in an offer to resolve. State. offer would be an adjudication, credit time served, and court costs. All right, we will accept that. Mr. Smith, did you have enough time to talk to your attorney? Yes, sir. And did you have an opportunity to review this plea form? Yes, sir. And did you understand everything on the plea form? Yes, sir. All right, I'm going to go over a few things to make sure you understand. You understand you're waiving the right to a trial and the rights associated with the trial? Yes, sir. You understand you're waiving the right to call any witnesses in your defense as well as to cross-examine the state's witnesses? Yes, sir. Do you understand that you're waiving the right to have the court, the judge, or jury decide your innocence or guilt? Yes, sir. Do you understand you're waiving the right to require the state to prove the case against you beyond a reasonable doubt? Yes, sir. Do you understand that you're waiving the right to appeal based on the facts of this case? Yes, sir. All right, do you suffer from any mental or physical disabilities that would limit your ability to understand this proceeding? No, sir. Are you currently under the influence of any drugs, alcohol, or medication that could limit your ability to understand these proceedings? No, sir. Do you understand that if you are not a U.S. citizen, you would be subject to deportation? Yes, sir. Do you understand that if you've ever been convicted of a sexually motivated or sexually violent offense, that you that you could be subject to involuntary civil commitment as a sexual predator? Yes, sir. All right. How do you plead to the charge of trespass after warning? No contest. All right. I find that you're alert and intelligent. Do you understand the nature of the rights that you're waiving? We'll therefore, proceed with sentencing. I'm going to adjudicate you guilty, uh, sentence you to credit time served, and impose court costs of three hundred and twenty-three dollars. Those will be reduced to a civil judgment. Okay. Tina Hill. Paul Clark. All right. We'll reset that to tomorrow. Antonio Hopkins. Monday. Ian Flack. All right, Mr. Flagg, you don't qualify for the services of the public defender. I do not, you say? You do not. It says here you make 1600 every two weeks. Is that correct? Uh, that, was, that was a little bit off. I was trying to do the math. It was supposed to be monthly. Monthly? Mm -hmm. What do you call it? Yeah, every two months. Okay. 
All right. Um, what I'm going to ask you to do is to just um, make sure that you can we give him this back so he can check the right box for monthly. appoint the public defender to represent you with regards to the violation of probation the court has reviewed the affidavit submitted by officer Her by officer sorry by officer Dixon and the warrant signed by uh, a judge in this circuit um, bond was set at no bond and will remain set at no bond um, you can request that judge Harris consider a bond you can file that motion through your attorney, okay? All right, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. All right. Um, Cornet, Cornisa Gilliard Mobley. I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you. I do have an affidavit showing uh, that the court found that you violated probation for probable cause that you violated probation. Bond was set at no bond. Um, that warrant was signed uh, by Judge Whitehead. The court will leave the bond at zero bond, and you can request that Judge Whitehead set a bond. All right? David yes, Riles. Yes, sir. How are you doing? Good. Mr. Riles, was he previously appointed the public defender? Um, I can't. Okay. Yeah. Okay, they'll get it. It's okay. They'll get it. Yeah, it's exactly. Officer, I guess put on the phone. I need to call probation. They didn't want to do. Okay. There's no time. They did. All right, Mr. Riles, can you hear me? Yes, sir. All right, um, sir. Did you want the court to appoint the public defender to represent no, no, you? No, I represent myself. All right, so at this point, there's a violation of probation um, that, that's alleged here. I do find there is sufficient probable cause with respect to the violation. With regards to bond, since you violated your probation, the court will set bond at no bond, but you may request a bond from the judge who's handling, who will be handling the violation of probation. Can I, can, I, can I talk at all? Sir, I would advise you that anything you say will be used against you. The state attorney is sitting right there uh, and all these proceedings are recorded. So I'd advise you that if you wish to speak to someone, that it be your lawyer and that if you wish to have a court appointed lawyer, that you can fill out an application and one will be appointed okay. to you. Can I get a, how do I get my, pro, my, pro, my private lawyer? Um, you're gonna have to contact them on your own. Okay, how can I how can I help do that? All right. Well, sir, you can talk to the jail staff with respect to uh, any commissary or any money you may have in your account what, to access the phone. But other than that, I, I really can't tell you what to do. Okay. Can I can I just say one thing? Go ahead. Okay. I just I just got out in 90 days. My, I was over there helping my dad. It's probably a really bad idea to huh. talk about the facts of your okay. violation. I, I agree. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, good. Geralee Spitzer? Yes. All right. All right. 
Ms. Spitzer, would you like for the court to appoint you the public defender? No, I have a private attorney. Who's your attorney? Leslie Sweets. All right. Um, I just got arrested yesterday, so it's going to take her a couple of days. Um, I contacted her yesterday and she got paid this morning. So All right. she'll be back. So, today. state, um, there's only a bare allegation that violation of condition five of the uh, probation was violated. There's no affidavit attached, state is setting forth any facts as to what offense was committed, other than stating that it's an aggravated battery with great bodily harm. Do you have any additional information for the court? Not at this time, Your Honor. The state would ask for a, re a reset in order to find uh, All right. Find more information. All right, so at this point, um, I'm gonna grant them a 24 hour review. Uh, we're gonna come back tomorrow, give them 24 hours to try to supplement what they've submitted as to this point and we'll address your case again tomorrow. So that'll be the third time I come back for what I'm violated. Like, what am I coming back for? Well, um, this is the first time that I've seen this case. Were you here previously on the violation of probation? No. All right, well then you'll come back tomorrow on the violation of probation. All right? <coughs> Chad Wa Waters? Yes. All right. Mr. Waters, you do not qualify for the services of a public defender. Um, it appears that you make $1,000 a week, is that correct? Yes, give or take. Okay. All right, it's alleged that you violated your probation. And the reason for the violation is that you've, it's alleged that you committed a DUI driving while under the influence in agency case number 19-79558. State, anything additional? No, Your Honor. All right, I do find probable cause with respect to the violation. Bond will re remain set at zero bond. Um, and you can request that the judge handling your violation of probation reconsider that. Um, you can do that through any attorney that you retain, okay? All right. Titiana Williams? Yes. All right, Ms. Williams, I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you. All right, I do find there is probable cause with respect to the violation of probation for driving while license suspended. Excuse me, Your Honor. Yes, ma'am. Or no, I'm sorry, no valid driver's license? Yes, um, it wasn't me driving. They thought it was me. It was my boyfriend. Um, he tried to come up, but I guess he couldn't because it's not due to um, domestic violence, I guess they were saying. All right, well, ma'am, at this point, based on the affidavit, um, the court does find that there's probable cause. That may be a defense you want to present to the judge who's handling your case. And uh, you can do so through your attorney. But at this time, uh, bond will remain at zero bond as to that case. With respect to the no valid driver's license, um, the court will set bond at $100 as to that charge. Wali Abdul Rashid? Yes, sir. All right. All right. 
Sir, do you want the court to appoint you the public defender? No, sir. All right. I do find that there is sufficient probable cause for the offense of disorderly conduct. Bond was set at $250. Bond will remain set at $250 with the additional condition that he not return, not return to the intersection of Magnolia Avenue and Colonial Drive. Yes, Your Honor. All right? Yes, Your Honor. Charles Bowen. No. All right. Mr. Bowen, I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you. I do find that there is sufficient probable cause. Um, defense, do you wish to ask your client if he wants to resolve his case? Yes, Your Honor, what, what, what's the name? Uh, Charles Bowen. Mr. Bowen is interested in resolving the case, Your Honor. All right. State, do you want to make an offer? State's offer would be a withhold credit time served at court cost. All right. Mr. Bowen, do you wish to accept that offer? Yeah. All right. We'll have you uh, speak to your attorney for a second, and then uh, we'll take your plea. Thank you. Mr. Bowen, do you need any additional time to speak with your attorney? I think we had enough. All right. And did you have an opportunity to review the form? Uh, yes. And did you understand everything on the form? Not everything. All right. So let me give it back to you so that you can review it again, because I'm going to ask you just some quick questions about it, all right? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll read it. I'll get one right here somewhere. Yep, that's all right. So.
Your Honor. All right. All right, so Mr. Bowen, do you understand what the rights that are uh, explained on the form? Yeah. All right, so I'm just going to go over a few of them very quickly with you. Do you understand that you have the right to a trial? Yeah. Do you understand that by entering this plea, you're waiving the rights to a trial and the rights associated with the trial? Yeah. Do you understand that you're waiving the right to call witnesses as well as the right to cross-examine the state's witnesses? Yeah. Do you understand that you're waiving the right to have a jury or judge decide your innocence or guilt? Y yeah. Do you understand that you're also waiving the right to require the state to prove the case against you beyond a reasonable doubt? Yes. Do you understand that you're also waiving the right to appeal based on the facts of the case? Yes. Are you currently under the influence of any drugs, alcohol, or medication that could affect your ability to understand these proceedings? No. Do you suffer from any mental or physical disabilities that affect your ability to understand this proceeding? No. Do you understand that if you are not a U.S. citizen that you would be subject to deportation? Yes. Do you understand that if you were ever convicted of a sexually motivated or sexually violent offense, entering into this plea would subject you to be involuntarily civilly committed as a sexually violent predator? Um, do, you, do you understand that if you were convicted no. of a sexually violent or sexually motivated offense that you could be yeah, subject yeah. to involuntary civil commitment. I understand that. Okay. All right. Uh, with regards to the offense of uh, camping, uh, how do you plea? Well, I was, I was unconscious. Okay. What, 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 what. How do you remember, plea? Remember no contest. Yeah, no, no contest. All right. I find that you're alert and intelligent, that you understand the rights that you're waiving and that you're doing so voluntarily. I will therefore proceed with sentencing. I will sentence you to a, uh, a withhold adjudication, sentence you to credit time served, um, and apply court costs of the amount of 273. Those will be reduced to a civil judgment. All right, thank you, sir. Thank you, all. All right, Melvin Holt. All right, Mr. Holt, I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you. I do find there is sufficient probable cause with respect to the offense of camping. Defense, um, does your client wish to consider entering a plea? We'd like to enter a plea, Your Honor. All right, State, what's your offer? State's offer would be a withhold credit time served and court cost. All right. And Mr. Holt, would you like to accept that offer? Yes. All right. Why don't you take a minute to speak with your lawyer? All right, Mr. Holt, um, did you have enough time to speak with your attorney? Yes, sir. And did you have an opportunity to review the plea form? Yes. Did you understand the rights contained on the plea form? Yes. All right, I'm going to go over a few of them with you make sure you understood them. Do you understand that by entering this plea, you're waiving the right to trial and the rights associated with the trial? Yes. Do you understand that that includes that you're waiving the right uh, to call any witnesses in your defense as well as the right to cross-examine any of the state's witnesses? Yes. You understand that you're, wa you're waiving the right um, to have a judge or jury decide your innocence or guilt? Yes. You understand that you're waiving the right to require the state to prove the case against you beyond a reasonable doubt? Yes. You understand that you're waiving the right to testify or not to testify and not have that silence held against you? Yes. You understand that you're waiving the right to appeal based on the facts of the case? Yes. Uh, are you currently under the influence of any drugs, alcohol, or medication that could affect your ability to understand this proceeding? No, sir. Um, do you suffer from any mental or physical disabilities that could affect your ability to understand this proceeding? No. 
You understand that if you are not a U.S. citizen, you would be subject to, to deportation by entering this plea? Yeah. And you understand that if you've never been convicted, that if you've ever been convicted of a sexually violent or sexually motivated offense, that you would be subject to involuntary civil commitment? Yeah. All right, how do you plead to the offense of camping? All right, I find that you're alert and intelligent, that you understand the rights that you're waiving and that you're doing so voluntarily. We'll therefore accept your plea and proceed to sentencing. We'll sentence you to a withhold of adjudication, credit time served, and we'll impose court costs of $273. Those will be reduced to a civil judgment. Thank you, sir. Robert Pullins? Yes, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Pullins, do you wish for the court to appoint the public defender? Yes, Your Honor. I don't see an affidavit in here. All right. Has he previously been appointed the public defender in the 2019 CF case? All right, based on the previous appointment, I will appoint the public defender in this case. I do find there is sufficient probable cause with respect to the uh, offensive open container of an alcoholic beverage. Defense, do you wish to be heard with respect to release? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Pullins would um, like an offer from the state in this matter. Just keep in mind that he does have an open case, which is currently I think he's on uh, ROR for that case. So by entering a plea, be, he'd be admitting to that offense. So I, I think because um, there's no filing decision in the out on bond case, I'd just be asking the court to take no action on that case. And I think a plea to the open container would, would be okay. They, they seem to be separate offenses in time, so I don't think an admission would impact his open felony. All right, and State, do you have an offer? State's offer would be a withhold, credit time serve, and court costs. All right, Mr. Pullins, you wish to accept that offer? Yes, Your Honor. All right, why don't you take a minute to speak with your lawyer, and then we'll take your plea. Yes, sir. All right, Mr. Pullins, did you have enough time to speak with your attorney? Yes, Your Honor. And did you have an opportunity to review the plea form? Yes, sir. And did you understand the plea form? I do. All right. I'm just going to ask you a few questions to make sure you understood everything on here. Do you understand that by entering this plea, you're waiving the rights to trial and the rights associated with the trial? Yes, Your Honor. Do you understand that you're, by doing that, you're waiving the right to call any witnesses as well as to present, and to call any witnesses as well as to cross-examine any of the state's witnesses? Yes, sir. Do you understand that you're waiving the right to have a judge or jury decide your innocence or guilt? Yes, Your Honor. Do you understand that you're waiving the right um, to require the state to prove the case against you beyond a reasonable doubt? Yes, sir. Do you understand that you're waiving the right to appeal based on the facts of the case? Yes. <clears throat> and are you currently under the influence of any drugs, alcohol, or medication uh, no, uh, that could affect your ability to understand this proceeding? No, Your Honor. Um, do you suffer from any mental or physical disabilities that could affect your ability to understand this proceeding? No, I don't. Do you understand that if you are not a U.S. citizen, entering to this plea would subject you to deportation? Yes, Your Honor. And do you understand that if you have been convicted of a sexually motivated or sexually violent offense, that you would be that you could be subject to involuntary civil commitment as a sexually violent predator? Yes, yes, sir. All right. With respect to the offense of uh, 
Open container alcoholic beverage. How do you plea? Uh, no contest, Your Honor. All right, I will accept your plea. I find that you're alert and intelligent. Do you understand the rights that you're waiving and that you're doing so voluntarily? Will therefore proceed with sentencing. I will withhold adjudication, sentence you to credit time served, and, and impose court costs of $223. That will be reduced to a civil judgment. And I will take no action on the grand theft. You're still ROR'd us to that. All right, sir? Yes, thank you, Your Honor. All right, Jaleel Williamson. Yes, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Williamson, I'm gonna appoint the public defender to represent you. With respect to solicitation without a permit, I do find there is sufficient probable cause with respect to that offense. Um, counsel, do you wanna to speak to your client about whether he wishes to resolve his case today? Mr. Williamson would like to resolve the case. Can I? State, is there an offer? The offer would be a withhold credit time served and court costs. Mr. Williamson, do you want, wish to accept that offer? Yes, Your Honor. All right, why don't you take a minute to speak with your attorney? I'm sorry. It's good sometimes just to know. All right, Mr. Williamson, did you have enough time to speak with your attorney? Yes, Your Honor. All right, and did you have an opportunity to review the form? Yes. And did you understand everything on the form? I did. All right, I'm gonna ask you some questions and make sure you understood all the rights contained on the form. All right. All right, so first you understand that by entering this plea, you're waiving the right to trial and the rights associated with the trial. Yes, Your Honor. And you understand that, that, that you're waiving, by doing that, that you're waiving the right to uh, call any witnesses in your defense as well as the right to cross-examine any of the state's witnesses. Yes. You understand that you're waiving the right to have the judge or jury decide your innocence or guilt. Yes. You understand that you're waiving the right to require the state to prove the case against you beyond a reasonable doubt. Yes. Do you understand that you're waiving the right to appeal based on the facts of the case? Yes. Do you understand, well, are you currently under the influence of any drugs, alcohol, or medication at this time that would affect your ability to understand this proceeding? No. Do you suffer from any mental or physical disabilities that would affect your ability to understand this proceeding? No. Do you understand that if you are not a US citizen that entering this plea would subject you to deportation? Yes. Do you understand that if you've ever been convicted of a sexually motivated or sexually violent offense that you could be subject to involuntary civil commitment under the Jimmy Rice Act? Yes. All right. As to the charge of soliciting without a permit, how do you plea? No contest. All right, I find that you're alert and intelligent, that you understand the rights that you're waiving and that you're doing so voluntarily. We'll therefore proceed with sentencing. I'm gonna withhold adjudication, um, sentencing you to credit time served. I will impose court costs of 273. Um, just keep in mind in reading the report, um, one of the concerns that I had is that you're going into traffic when you're doing this. I wanted to stress to you how dangerous that is. And the last time that I did IAs, I'm not saying, you've already entered the plea. The last Can I say time, something to you after you're done talking? Sure. All right. The last time I was here, I had somebody who was actually seriously injured doing that. So right. I wanna make sure that, that if you're doing that, that you're very careful, because this is a very serious thing. Absolutely, Your Honor. I'm glad I'm in a courtroom right here in front of everybody. I need you to know, I don't have no other way to get money. All right, I don't have no ID. To, uh, the, the, I just not. It's, I'm just trying my hardest. All right, I understand that, and that's why I reduced your uh, court cost to a civil judgment. All right. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, there's that. Yeah. What is it called? I dignity. Yeah. Yeah. You can let him know. He can get an ID um, over on Central. There's the I dignity office, and they help people routinely get IDs. All right, that concludes IAs for today. Thank you, everyone.